go ahead of me. Well, not a little bit. Just... Oh, well, fine. Yeah, I'm gonna start talking then. Fuck you. Yeah, it's, it's fucking talk already. Jesus. Doobly doobly doo. Here I go with the talking. Oh, wow. You're so good at talking. Thank you. I've actually it's been impressive. training all life. Nice. Me too. I'm not as good, though. Trained with Tibetan monks. They don't talk a lot, I think. I remember a time in media where characters, as an excuse, are just having loads of training, trained with Tibetan monks. Thing they do. <laughs> Batman trained with Tibetan monks was just random people. It doesn't one of those guys to go to like a monk, like train me in fighting. It's like, nah, we just do make we just do beer, or brewery. Be really cool. I'll train you in beer. <laughs> train you in beer. And then, you know, the villain is winning in the end because he's poisoning the air with beer, and but, <laughs> but Batman Damn. prepared. Yeah, I just, I just think that would be a better story than what, what we've got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just writes itself. You have Mr. Freeze, Mr. Penguin, Mr. Riddler, you have Mr. Beer. All lines Mr. up. Mr. Beer. Mr. Booze. Like Duffman. And after you fight Mr. Beer, you need bad ibuprofen the next day. I can't be good ibuprofen. No, bad. Like, like, shut up. I thought. You don't think. I did a few times, remember? Oh, yeah. They were good times. Yeah. It's good, good times. That's there, that's there, that's working active, that's all, that's that. God, everything is like working. Do, 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 do. Shocking, I know. Now, today, we got. We're gonna do Streamlabs, catch up on that. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna do uh, two catch up catch ups. So, um, we will then, once I achieve all of those and the days in, in like, like, like incoming super chats. We will only have old episodes of EFAP left. Oh, wow. That's... Oh. And we recently finished a second one of those in our, in our offline escapades. You mad uh, lads. I think we have five left after that. Of varying sizes. But we're getting there. Terrifying, I know. I'm proud of you guys. It is kind of terrifying. I feel like I won't know what to do with my life anymore. There won't be anything. May as well just play some video games or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. How am I? I see, see <laughs> yeah, people right. complaining why I'm not... I see people complaining in chat already. Metal, why are you not beating people with shields? Like, I, I can do other stuff sometimes. Sometimes Metal doesn't want to beat people up with shields. So. Um, I'm, I'm preparing the Mootle's Forge for Friday. It's okay. It's okay that he doesn't one want of, to do One of two this week. I'm going fucking mental this week. He's forging two things this week. Two everyone. things. Craziness. Absolute, Absolute mad lad. So, oh. I suppose we shall get started with the first one. In order okay. for Superman's screams in Zack Snyder's Justice League to travel across the world like they do, it'd have to be 1600 decibels. However, only 1100 decibels is required to create a black hole. You heard me what? right. Superman can create a black hole. Can black holes be created solely with sound? I had... This is news to me. Maybe that's the case, but... I, I remember legit... this coming up before. I just never, I guess, fully went into it. Because, like, just, just making loud sounds enough can then just make... Is it is it a matter of... Too much physics is happening and thus a black hole happens? I have no clue. I thought you were a physicist. Not an expert uh, in black no, I'm physical. Way. Oh, but I'm not a I mixed them up. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, black hole sound waves. Um, let me see. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll be right back. Just finishing up the last couple of minutes of the poofy. Okay. Can you, make, can you make a black hole with sound? What did Google say? Let's see. Um, it says, sonic black holes are possible because phonons in perfect fluids exhibit the same properties of motion as fields, such as gravity, in space and time. 
For this reason, a system in which a sonic black hole can be created is called a gravity analog. Neat. And it says, it says here that a sound of 1,100 decibels would create so much energy it would act as an act as a immensely high quantity of mass, and this would, in turn, um create enough gravity to form an extremely large black hole larger in fact than our observable universe well. um however this noise would be several orders of magnitude greater than a supernova so its chances of ever happening are well outside the bounds of reality well well i'll have them well well know. that's not going to stop zach yeah. <laughs> Well outside the bounds of reality. <laughs> Zach was like, well, let me stop you there. Luckily, this film ain't no reality. Yeah, that's true. Well, the more you know. The more you know. Um, I despise the speech that Master Chief gives Brohammer in Infinite. It's overwritten purple prose that is nothing like what Chief would do. He would just have laid a hand on Brohammer's shoulder and maybe given one or two lines. Uh, is this in the campaign or? Yeah, I know there's. I know about that scene, but I didn't play that far. So. <laughs> Asking a lot to play the campaign, I know. I think Metal did the whole thing. Oh. If if he were oh unmuted, he could tell us of this incredible cutscene. Because if you guys remember, Metal talked a lot about his enjoyment of the Halo Infinite's campaign. He wouldn't shut up about it. That's true. That's true. One game he just never talks about is Elden Ring. I've just never even heard. I don't even know if he's played it, but. Halo Infinite, ooh, inseparable, I would Loved say. It. Yeah. It's weird to see him not playing it. Mm -hmm. I almost want to wonder, if I want to ask, hey, are you okay? I mean, he might be, uh, have a bit of the, right. the flu. He's just feeling down. Well, that's okay, you know. Ups and downs, that's what our life's all about. Mm -hmm. Um, what if they called Jane the Mighty Mewling Quim? Oh, oh, oh references. But that's the Mighty for, Mewling Quim? That's for, um... Black Widow, how would have to be called that? Okay, it was what, it's what Loki a, called her. A quim? What's yeah. a quim? Uh, that's probably got old English definition and a new English one, as far as I'm aware. Hmm. Maybe an Urban Dictionary one. Possible. Hmm. About to fetch a couple key lime pies from the oven. What are your favorite pies or pastries? Hmm. Um, pies? I really like a good, uh, I like cheesecake. And a pumpkin pie is very delicious. I don't think I've uh, ever had a pumpkin pie. I like cheese and meats and pie. Um, I can believe that a pumpkin pie is a more, like, American kind of regional thing. Hmm. Uh, we do love our, our pumpkins here. They are delicioso. Well, that's good. Yeah. But they're good. Uh, if you ever have the chance to have one, uh, go for it. They are generally like a, uh, like an autumn kind of thing. Around Thanksgiving, they're really big. Thanksgiving, Halloween, uh, Christmas sort of time. We love ourselves some pumpkin pies. Yes, we do. I don't think what else we got. Uh, just, just pastries in general. I like pasties. I can't remember if. You guys don't call them that, right? No, I'm not oh, sure what that is. Well, let me let me look it up. P A S T Y. Yeah. Hey, I'm back. Hello. Um. So you're talking about a a Cornish, in this code, they're, they're pasty, pasties, 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 pasty. Or some commonerish, looking pasty. Look at my pasties. I, I suppose they are in parts of America. They say this one mentions Wisconsin, which is far from me. Uh, they're up way up north. Hmm. Yeah, it says here American pasties are <laughs> the American equivalent to Cornish pasties. So, the, yeah, this is saying northern Wisconsin and upper Michigan. So I guess they're more of a northern thing. Huh. Uh, because here it's not really a thing that you get. I like. A, are they kind of like a hot pocket? 
I don't really know what a hot pocket is, so possibly. Oh no! It's like uh, a bully. So... Cultural differences, no. So if you, so they're they're like a um. Okay, here's I got a picture. Yeah, oh, I, we've okay. had stuff. I had something similar to this on a Fat Tuesday. Yeah, um, it was yeah they're like a Mardi Gras thing too. Uh, they're they're like a bread that was this pastry bread that's a, that holds in like meat and veggies and stuff. Whatever, you, really, just whatever you want to put yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've had those before. Oh, whoops. Uh, we're not doing EFAP right now. <laughs> are we not? <laughs> no, wait. Well, we are, but we're not EFAP made, EFAP mini. Oh, no, this is we a... a shortcut that, that made us oh, go. you fool. I told Everyone you was like, that. whoa, sudden EFAP episode. Let's oh do it. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no. Bum, ba, dum, ba. Um, about to fetch a couple. Oh wait, that was what they said. Yes, love your work, Mola. Real BBC and EFAP are two of my favorite shows on YouTube. Scritches for the good boy, Springy. Oh, thank you. Does uncooked custard count as goo? I don't know what uncooked, like uncooked custard. I, mm, I don't know if that would count as goo. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Science Mr. team will get back to you on that one. Mister Minds. Um, Dave Filoni's The Clone Wars is a prime example of a crowd pleaser. Normies love it, but anyone that's a veteran of Star Wars and knows the expanded universe lore, or even just the movies, knows the show killed the franchise. Oh. Oh. Bold. I think a lot of people would wow. be upset with that statement. Star Wars has been okay. dead since 08. A lot of people put different claims on when it would have died. Um, I guess it just means what, well, you just have to be sure of what, uh, you define as the, sh the, the stuff dying, I guess. Huh? Yeah, I suppose so. Some people would say it died in 1999. Some would say it died in 1983. Some would say that it died in 2000 and whenever. What is it? 1999. Some would say that it died in 2015. I think if you're going to go with the sequels, they would just say 2012. Hold it. Like, that's when it died. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, it's going to just Fair depend enough. on what you believe that was being dead means I guess like is it Disney simply owning it because they so bad or is it once the writing got more and more inconsistent or is it once it started to lose favor with general audiences even yeah, though I you know it's still it's got their own little breaking point yeah. yeah and it's still relatively in favor with general audiences I assume I don't know the numbers for all the TV shows but the fact they haven't made a movie now in well three Coming up to three years. I love how that's restrained. Like, yeah, that's restrained. <laughs> wow, you went three whole years without making a Star Wars episode. Look like, at you. That was normal once, but... You know, I remember we yeah. had to wait 20 years in between the three years. Crazy. Uh, hmm. We need to finally put an end to this. Is Fringy a frog or a bird? Straw poll, maybe? I don't see how the, the straw poll determines something like that, you know? I think that's... Then why not both? Sounds like you're about to... You, yeah, you could be a frog bird. A frid? Yeah, like a little, uh, like a... Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brog? A brog. Or a furred. Mm. Ooh. Uh, I should have bought Elden Ring instead of that Lego game. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I don't that's even what I hear. Yeah. I bet Elden Ring is full of like gameplay and stuff, things. Oh, there's a little gameplay. I I, I played it a little bit. It's, it's all right. Hmm. I don't believe you. Which part? Um. Also, they said Shadow got dethroned as Edge Lord by Infinite. Check face reveal cutscene on YouTube. Uh, what are we talking about? I don't. No I don't idea. know. I want the world this hanging. Also, high ranks. Hello. Uh, oh, apparently Avatar will be re-released in cinemas worldwide in September. In anticipation for Avatar 2. Sure. Are they gonna remaster any of it or touch it no. up or anything like that? It just says re-release. Didn't they already re-release it? I did. 
I don't know. Oh yeah, they did when they when they briefly. When Endgame the... was rude yeah. enough to think it's more relevant than Avatar. Those bastards. The nerve. The fucking nerve. What we call rudeness. Uh, right. Banana fact of the day. Did you know that Logic does not have a banana under his mask? You can tell this by the lack oh. of a so-called beak when looking at him. Isn't that interesting, oh, Fringy? Yeah. I have noticed that. That is interesting. Yeah, not really. Oh. You don't think it's it? Okay, well. It's sometimes when you don't see, like, a, a beak-type thing, then that means that is kind of, like, proof that there's no strong, typical banana in the face. I think that is a good connection, at least, to make. Rag's classic rock references so far. Blue Oyster Cult Godzilla, Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle, Derek and the Dominoes, Layla, the Moody Blues, the whole band. Keep them up. What's everyone's favorite Queen song? Hmm. Bohemian Rhapsody. Just Probably so that, yeah. It's, it's just so good. That's, yeah. <laughs> I, good I think, yeah. Honorable mention to Don't Stop Me Now, but then again, honorable mentions go to basically their entire discography, you know? <laughs> yeah. So many good ones, mm -hmm. but Bohemian Rhapsody is typically what rises to the top. Bam, 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 bam. Um, well, alright, if there's no other suggestions, because I, I do think that... Uh, uh, I that's... think we're in agreement, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, we I are. we're in yeah. agreement on that. Wow, fucking echo chamber. I know, right. Yo, Fringy, the guy who played Owen in Blind Manor posted a video of him walking through thick snow while screaming Dutch and pretending to be Arthur Morgan, titled Not a Day Goes By Where I Don't Think About RDR 2. That touched my soul. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, I'll be, uh, keeping more, because they're, they're probably not even far away from wrapping filming on, um... No, probably not. I used to know what it was called, now I don't. <laughs> the, the new show that Mike Flanagan's doing. I mean, he legit is trying to make one per year, isn't he? Seems that way. Kind of amazing, because uh, that level of production to me is like, oh, so you're probably going to end up with a, you know, a bit of a downfall quality-wise. And yet, uh, you know, even Midnight Mass, yeah. it's just yeah. kind of shit. Typically, is... it's only the last episode, yeah. Yeah, well, I was just going to say that we, we, we would take it over any of the, the Moon Knights Absolutely. and the... Because, like, Mike Flanagan likes characters. The Fall of the, of the House of Usher. That's the name of ah, the movie. Ah, yeah. Edgar Allan um, Poe short story. Mark Hamill's in it, um, as well as a bunch of familiars. So it'll be a fun one for us to check out. Hopefully mm, we oh, absolutely speaking, love it. Speaking of Mike Flanagan casting, we saw a movie that had a Mike Flanagan casted character uh, the other night. We did. Yeah, we I guess watched... some people who'd be interested in knowing. Did, Frangie, did you watch it? No. Okay, I didn't know if you went and watched it afterwards, but um, we watched... Shall, shall we do... Do you have any intention of watching it or interest in it? I have no idea what it is. <laughs> we can be spoiler Color free. Out of Space. Yes, uh, I was given many recommendations for it on the last open bar catch-up I was on, and I was like, you've piqued my curiosity, especially because uh, it's rare you get modern and careful, I guess, uh, adaptations of Lovecraft's work. And I say that as the, I know people would be like, we're a Lovecraft country, and it's like, you know that doesn't count. Nobody counts <laughs> that. Horrible. Um, so, yeah, we checked it out. Myself, you did check it out. Ragalicious yes. and Jay. Jay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, was it by Mel? I was like, no, it was Jay. Oh, it was us. It I was, was probably us. asleep when us. you guys watched that because that's probably an ungodly hour for me. Ungodly. God's <laughs> all ungodly. hours. Ungodly. <laughs> God's powerful, huh? bro. He's like all the hours. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> See, what are you, God <laughs> now? <laughs> like, well, yeah, we watched it. It was a film. It was a film. It oh, was like um, overall decent, I think. Yes. Um, I think it depends on what you are looking for in a flim. Yes. So if you are in it for the 
excellent characters, dialogue, um, really empathetic ensemble, then I think you will be immensely disappointed, unfortunately. The, the characters, I think, are really a, quite a weak point. There is some um, character work in there. There is a little, yes. A um, little not with. much. Often not in a way that really makes much of a, you know, well, a difference. Yeah, a lot of it is, well, is, is offset by it being like, well, they're also all going nuts because that's how Lovecraft stories work. And I, I just wonder, I think that, like, you know, Event Horizon and how everything's going to shit. I still think they had much more defined characters in that from memory. Um, I think they behaved in ways that seem more reasonable. I would uh, go as far as saying that I don't think it's impossible to maintain a Lovecraft by its story with characters who are on varying scales of not only having characters in general, I just mean, but like even having some arcs going and uh, meaningful journeys within the madness. I'm totally on board with having mad characters, though. Don't worry about it. I just, I'm just saying. Because, like, Nicolas Cage is probably the one that has the most going on, quote unquote. It wasn't. Yeah, I would quite say so. Um, but even what we have with him is, like, it's, it's not bad. Yeah. But it's just not a lot. There's hardly anything there. Um, his acting is good. I enjoyed kind of the acting across the board. I feel like everyone was acting a okay. It's just mm -hmm. what they were doing, what they were saying, how they were communicating to each other. Um, but you you really do get kind of you get kind of annoyed when you're watching all of this stuff play out, and you're watching these characters in this scenario that gets progressively more and more uh, floopy and strange. And you're just, you're frustrated when no one seems to act like you would expect. When, when people just fail to convey basic information to people. And you're just like, uh, uh, why are, like, what, uh, You wonder, like, are they already in the part of the psychosis that they just don't even want to leave anymore? And then they're like, we need to get out of here. And you're like, oh, I guess not. Why is it taking this long to decide to leave? And then, like, five minutes later, they'll be like, in fact, I don't want to leave anymore. And you're like, uh, well, yeah, I guess there you go. Um, I think that one of the problems movies like that have is why in the world did these people stay in this place? It's like... Yes. And, and that wasn't working quite well. Um, nope. For a low-budget film, I think it we checked it as, like, seven million budget or something like that. Uh, very impressive. Really, for, yeah. It, yeah, really great use of the money they had, and it was yes. some very... Uh, very creepy moments made with absolutely it does not seem and... like a cheap movie it yeah. seems like a movie that instead just has focus in what it wants to show um unfortunately that doesn't extend to a lot of you know the character work and them interacting with each other and the world around them but what they needed to spend the money on they spent the money on and it paid off pretty well if you're looking for a movie that has tension and environmental drama i guess you could call it in a rising spooky kind of atmosphere then i think that you will enjoy the movie i am glad i saw it but if you are looking disturbing for disturbing elements Go on. yeah 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 if you're looking for a disturbing movie i think this will absolutely tickle your fancy but if you're looking for a, a cast of characters um that are interesting and well developed uh, that I don't think that you will, I don't think you'll enjoy the movie. But I think I enjoyed it overall. I'd recommend. I it enjoyed for it those overall, reasons. and I can see why yeah. it's got a better reputation than a lot of Lovecraft films do. I, I can see it. Absolutely, I do. I do. And understand. I do recommend it for anybody who's uh, one and got, got that itch of Lovecraft, not getting scratched by anything mainstream. Mm -hmm. This uh, it seems to be as close as we can get. Um, We'll, we'll get some more stuff as time goes on, I'm sure. And there's plenty of stuff that probably exists that I've never even heard of. Um, but yeah, I guess it was just it was a recommendation by a couple of people. We watched it and we thought that was okay. Yeah. Um, there was lots of choices visually to represent the nightmare that is living in a Lovecraft world and that we were very happy with. Uh, yes. It was good to see that. That's what kind of piqued my interest in... Watching it when Mahler had mentioned it to me, and I was down to see it, so we just we saw it. Yeah, uh, sorry, Color it's called Color Out of Space. Space. Yeah, if anybody's used. 
one of the movies Nick Cage has made in his huge set of movies where he said he was trying to pay off his taxes, I think. <laughs> but uh, he, he was explicit. He said he didn't not try for any of those movies, and it comes through. Especially this uh, absolutely. one. He really is trying. Yeah, nothing absolutely. He, he acts well. He really does. Nick Cage is a good actor. I enjoy him in pretty much anything at this point, I think. I think so, too. I'm always ready to watch him, see what he does. Well, I think they I, did uh, it. For, yeah. I watched uh, Unbreakable, uh, not Unbreakable, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent uh, yesterday. And that was basically just the, like big old kind of a celebration of Nick Cage, like as a <laughs> as a character almost. Um, yeah, so I, if you like Nick Cage, that's probably a film I'd recommend watching. Sweet. Well, I would if they would do screenings for it. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? It's like, yeah, there weren't many. Um, not many for the Northmen either. I'll just go watch Doctor Strange a couple times. Yeah, I'll do it next Strange week. It's hogging all of the screenings like it is. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's how it is with Marvel movies when they come out. If, if I go with the, what the cinema, the local says. It, the, the, the massive talent one only comes out like June 26th or some shit. I don't oh, know why they did that. I don't understand why. Well, well, I got a screening for Northman now. I'm gonna watch that tomorrow. Still gotta see it. Yeah, there's been a couple of things to see all at once. Oh, go to cinema this weekend, next week. I don't even know when I ever did that. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to think that Metal Commander isn't actually endlessly crying, Rags isn't actually Bro. a dog, Mullet isn't actually what? long, and Fringy isn't actually a frog bird goo man. Hey, Ugh. how about you shut your fucking mouth? Unbelievable. All that thing, blessed is the mind too small for doubt. Uh, fucking lying. I won't have my name. I won't have that my name pretty... besmirched like this. Uh, I've been... Everything we do. Disrespected is... that heavily. Look, I, I read them out as they are. We're getting bands done right now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're all going out. Especially for anybody who says they don't hate their life. They have to go. Oh, Unbelievable. Go. Get the fuck out of here. We only want self-life haters in this exactly. stream audience. Yeah. Why a green shell and I'm third? I need something better than that. Or three green shells. Big Are you banana. playing Double Dash? Yeah. Nice. I thought I'd switch yeah. it up today. Okay, that's <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Slap and Brutal tell him to keep your name out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> keep Get my crying. My name. <laughs> oh, I right. like how we, we just talked about a celebration of, uh, of um, Nicolas Cage's <laughs> career, and then we bring up Will Smith as like mm. the polar opposite. <laughs> mm. A person who... Sad face. Once upon a time was hyper charming and is now just like awkward, lame, and killed his own career. It's like, oh, there you go. And meanwhile, Nicolas Cage, I don't know, basically, based on what I just saw, he's still got it. He's still super talented only, and fun to watch. Not only does he still have it, who doesn't like him at this point? Like, he just, he's such a, you just want to see him act. And he legitimately has <laughs> skill. He's a good actor. So watching him do his thing, whatever it may be, is always entertaining. <laughs> Hi, Rax. Hello. At the time of this message, Mischief now has 121k subscribers and will probably oh, be great. over double yeah. what Quantum TV has by the time you read this. Mischief should honestly put out a thank you video to Quantum. He couldn't have done it without him. Yeah, it's it's really true. What a what a crazy story that only continues to develop. That's it's madness. it's really insane. This Quantum guy is nuts. It's he, he called Act Man's mom. I yeah yeah. <laughs> Uh, like, dude, this dude's nuts, and he's putting out these insane. videos talking about how I'm still in the right, and they're trying to threaten me, and they're trying to threaten me with violence, and oh, he's a... What a fucking weirdo. Fucking loser. Um, <laughs> this happens so many times on the internet, again and again, when you try and get people's videos down, like a shitty understanding of the dynamic that's happening. The internet really fucking hates you. 
doing it. Yeah. I'm surprised he got away with it. it for so long. Because he's been doing that for a while, as far as I can tell, right? Um, but he went too far with I, Elden Ring. <laughs> I don't know. What's weird, too, is that apparently, now that he's sort of resurfaced as being a, like in the spotlight, because I know... Act Man made his videos on him. I made the videos on him. Other people have covered him. Uh, there's all now like Asmund Gold has reacted to some stuff as well, and he's so he's coming to light for everyone else. Mm -hmm. But I guess in the TV reviewer community, which is sort of what he does, he reviews TVs. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. They have known about him for a while, and they think he's a weirdo. Hmm. So, I wonder why. I don't know. Can't imagine why not. Is he any good at reviewing TV? I don't know. I have no clue. I, I there's a part of me that says surely he is because it's all he does, right? But another part of me is like, probably not. Well, probably not. If I have a new TV to buy. I know who to avoid now. That's right. It's the number one brand in honesty, so sounds pretty the reliable to me. The number one brand in honesty. That's right. Who's number two? Oh, joke. Uh, well, not us. We're a bunch of liars. <laughs> we're like but... 13. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're, we're the, up there. The, the number 13 brand in honesty. <laughs> you know what? That's good um, enough for me. Oh, and that's, that's it for Streamlabs. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, that was fun. Next up uh, the ti is entitled, it just says Super Chat Catch-Up, Catch-Up. So that's useful. Mm. Uh, Very I guess interesting. We'll just, yeah, we'll just, we'll just check out these questions, see what happens. Hey, Mola, rewatched your Amnesia Rebirth stream. Everyone should watch Kretosis' review of it. It's a long man at almost three hours, and it's really well done. Sure. Oh, is it? Uh, what? What's the guy's name? Could you, could you say Kretosis. Uh, C-R-E-E-T-O-S-I-S. -E -E um, uh, I celebrate me... anybody who rips into Amnesia Rebirth. They're, they're a good person automatically. Why does my top thumbnail look like... <laughs> <laughs> Let me mm -hmm. show you what my YouTube's doing right now. Look at this. Look at the. <laughs> Look at the top thumbnail. What is happening? Uh, oh. <laughs> it, like squished uh. it and squished it and stretched it out. Oh, I thought that was scrolled down. <laughs> Did a little squish. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna check this out because um, for those who are interested. Um. Uh, we did like a four-hour chat on Amnesia Rebirth after we all played it. Uh, myself, huh. Metal, and Mahler. Yeah. And uh, it was gonna just be an intro to an EFAP, but we ended up bitching about that game <laughs> for so long it became Robert its own down. EFAP discussion. You can. Boy, uh, that game is bad. Is oh, it? Yeah. Is it? Uh, is it archived on your channel, Mel? Your playthrough of it? Uh, it should be. Yeah. 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 I was gonna say you can oh, see. Neat myself and metal because mine can be found on my homepage as well playing that game with the best of faith okay we go in like Let's absolutely and well remember we have amnesia the dark descent that comes out that's amazing and then they make uh soma holy fuck arguably best game ever and then we're like we, we oh they're making another game amnesia rebirth oh my gosh i'm so excited roots. yeah and, and there was then lots of talk about how we're going to recontextualize Doctor Sent and bind the world, and and because you're going to the, the the world that Alexander came from and stuff, and you're going to be like, oh shit, all right. And then it was that. Oh yeah, I then played that game it, in like two sittings. Yeah, me. me too. Well, you can do all me three too. of them in two sittings, really. <laughs> An eight hour and a three and a half hour stream. Yeah, they're not particularly long games, and. Um... It's just whether or not you can handle the spooky, because it took me like four settings to get through and use this dark descent just because it was spooky and I needed to relax mm. and detense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> partially no because I didn't want to get too used to it, you know? I wanted to give myself a break and then hop back in. It's an um, intense game. Yeah. It is, it is very intense. But Amnesia Rebirth was just like I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> I'll come well, back like later. A, the curiosity people have is like, why didn't you want to cover it? And I'm like, you don't understand, my my fuel for covering Amnesia, how fucking good it is. And then Machine for Pigs was how much I... Because I, I, Machine for Pigs, I think I said in like retrospect, a lot better than Rebirth. Absolutely. You said, it, I mean, there's things to like about a Machine for Pigs, but, you know, yeah. it's no Dark Descent, but there's things to like. I don't even it. hate it. Um, I, at this point, I'm kind of neutral. I, I used to hate it, but my definition of bad has changed, I guess, or, or the scale mm. has altered. Um, 
And then, yeah, Soma, just one of my favorite things of all time for media. So then you, you got Rebirth, oh, which is just foul. <laughs> it is really foul. Let's, let, let's just put it in perspective here. I know why Amnesia the Dark Descent is called Amnesia the Dark Descent. I know why Amnesia a Machine for Pigs is called Amnesia a Machine for Pigs. I know why Soma is called Soma. I have no clue why Amnesia Rebirth is called Amnesia Rebirth. <laughs> you don't remember? You 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 die and then you come back somehow. As a remember? I, <laughs> Actually, I don't I don't think I really know if you know. Well, because you, you have the baby as well. Yeah. But, but that's not rebirth. Press X to baby. But like you died at some point in the campaign, right? And then you're resurrected by some other spirit or demony thing. It's possessing you. No. Plus, I could have sworn that's a thing. No, I don't think so. You dying is one of the endings, or two of them, or I think all three. Well, I only you see the thing is you, it's you, hard you, to remember uh, the other two endings because there's only one correct choice. And it's, uh, it's correct by such a, an astounding margin that you might as well have not given us a choice. Isn't it? Because like, you, you gradually turn into some kind of monster creature too, right? Or, or you, yeah. Like, oh, fuck. I, but you don't die. I can't remember the game anymore, and I, I you, know yeah. that my brain did that on purpose. This, yeah, the, the story <laughs> is absolute horseshit. Oh, it's terrible. It's really bad. But yeah, and, it and makes no sense. I've commented before on how uh, the Doctor Sen story is like, eh? Um, it's, it's it's fine, and I think they did pretty well with what they had. You might be like, what do you mean? It's like the story, as far as I'm aware, was written when more than half the game was complete. So yeah. that's an incredible fucking job. Very impressive. Because I think the story is, I mean, I guess suppose in the way that it's told, I'd say it's know, pretty good. I think there's, because like, I, I go over it in, in the series, but I'm just like, there's a couple things I'm not... I don't think is is that fantastic about it, but like when you when you discover that it's a story that he had to come up with, and then that same writer was given full freedom to make Soma, and look what you get. It's like, ooh, no. man, I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to lose him, team, you know. And then he left to go do <laughs> other completely Who knows what? unrelated other projects. We weren't able to figure out. He's just poof. He did, oh, yeah. We he's looked like, at his IMDb, he's working at like yeah. racing games. He's working like Need for Speed or something like that. I don't know. Oh, completely right. different yeah, things. Yeah. The person who arguably wrote like the best written video game ever, it's up there. And it's he just kind of went on to do other things. And you're like, what the fuck? How? How? Who? who how, how many of these gem people are out there who just have this <laughs> insane talent and are just doing whatever? Please come back. <laughs> Please um, come back. Whoever they hired <laughs> to do the, the rebirth story needs to be fired and save us. It's terrible. <laughs> um, what a horrific, horrific game. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. Amnesia Rebirth is really bad. Don't play it. Don't even. Don't play it. Well, well. Check out this three-hour review if it's as good as I've been told. Do that. That's true. I've got it tapped up. Yeah. I have an extra copy of Amnesia Rebirth because it wasn't a humble. <laughs> I'm level. just gonna burn it. <laughs> it was, I can't. It's digital. <laughs> you can. You can try Mel. Get a PNG of fire can, and rub it on the fire. Just copy it. Hold a little lighter at my screen. CD <laughs> Please go away. It. Also, you someone that, said. Right? I threw a sick banana just I then. I'm get glad it. I'm getting appreciated for that. That was a real good banana I threw in Waluigi Stadium. You I'm going to appreciate it. Oh, I gotcha. I just put the amnesia thingies in a playlist. <laughs> um, yeah. It just makes me realize there's a fuck ton of VODs of mine that just have automatically p placed ads. I just click on it and there's like 17 in the first 30 minutes. And then it's yeah, like the other things. It's like their automatic chapter thing. I think you have to turn that off. Or no, no, not chapters. Ad breaks. Like I know. I'm I know. Just in addition to it's oh, similar to gotcha. their chapters is that they just sort of put them places, and you don't. Sometimes I feel like you have to opt out of the automatic chapters. You don't mm. turn them on. YouTube does them automatically because they're Hasn't power done that crazy weirdos. Yet. Um. Yeah. Uh, Kritosis said. It's like the writers smeared themselves in shit and face rolled the keyboard to write the script. He even references your review a few times. You mean my stream? Oh. Uh, maybe the, oh, maybe they might our, be talking about your amnesia. One. Oh, oh, maybe. Yeah, right. Because um, if you talk about amnesia the Dark Descent, then it'll be easy to be like, see, this is why the Dark Descent was really good. And then he could reference something about, you know, something that you said. It's such a like, rare 
sort of experience to be like, isn't this perfect to compare how well it can be done, Dark Ascent, and how poorly it can be done? And I'm just like, this thing. Rebirth's like so just horrid that I, I don't want to go anywhere near it. It feels like, it feels like it just don't play it. Yeah. yeah. It's doesn't just deserve like one any of those respect. Icky... Kill it. Yeah, it's one of those icky, nasty B movies that I don't even recommend hmm. people watch because it's so bad. Just don't play it. Like, legitimately, don't play it. Don't fucking do it. You don't. Wrong. It's Morally it's incorrect bad. to play it. It's, it's <laughs> bad. Narratively and from a gameplay perspective, it's just bad. You won't like it. You'll be miserable. Um... Or Frank Herbert hasn't stopped rolling since this video was made. I guess uh, that's a Dune reference. Frank Herbert wrote Dune. So oh, now. it was a closer look video then, right? Oh, uh, what, with the 12% uh, first Yeah, time. <laughs> 12%. What? I, that's the memeable one. But remember, he, like, just suggests a whole ass different movie. And it's like, <laughs> this, is, this yeah. is the movie we go with. <laughs> I appreciate the boldness. Okay. Well, the thing is, like, when you're gonna suggest that a film should be radically different, that's something you need to qualify a lot. Otherwise, yeah. you're just always gonna have people kind of against you. It's um, there's something a little, uh, it can just be a little presumptuous, you know, like to to suggest that, like, well, yeah. here's an idea for what it should be that would definitely be better. It's like, all right, careful. I mean, you know, like, maybe you're just that good, but. I am skeptical. Well, yeah, I well, think, a, I think a, a clearer way that I would explain it is it's easy to sell an idea as being really cool. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's an idea, you know, and it should always be considered, like, taken as such. It's an yeah. idea, not necessarily better. It's just something that, you know, could have been tried. And there's, there's ways to express it as well as be careful with the subject, right? Because if it's Rise of Skywalker, pretty much anyone's idea of how to do a different movie there yeah. is probably going to be worthwhile compared oh, to yeah, what we that's got. A, yeah, but, that's one um, of those dice re-roll movies yeah. where you just like, it doesn't matter what it is, just re-roll just <laughs> re re -roll. the <laughs> dice on writing and we'll take it. You know, Anything's you, better you know, than that. You'll be a lot more careful when it's Dune, you know, when yeah. it's a, a book at, that has a reputation. A uh, even the film reputation. seems to be pretty well liked. I mean, I certainly yeah, yeah. liked at, it. Normally it's pretty well liked, it's well. considered pretty accurate to the book, right? At least more so than uh, David Lynch's version. Well, yeah, so you've got the twofold issue of your suggesting changes to a film that's liked, which also have implications on a book that's considered highly influential and important. So, yeah, tread carefully, you know. Um, hi, Rags, Frongle, and Mootle. Hello. Hey. Long How are up. you? Oh, wait, I'm on one, I guess. Hello. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> this critique was poor, to say the least. He, um, hmm. he had an approach. It was an approach. And uh, I think he's since said that the Dune video wasn't very good, so... Ah. That's good. It oh was shit, not. there's an actual release date for Avatar 2 now? Whoa. Yeah, oh. When is that? December 16th, and apparently it's called this Avatar year? The Way of Water. I'm pretty sure that uh, that hmm. release date's been set for years, by the way. I don't think that's new news. I'm pretty sure I've heard of that date. I thought it was like delayed well, like a million times. It was, it was delayed a million times, but I'm pretty sure that it's always been set. Because that's like one of the things that's pointed out is Shazam is releasing the same weekend. Or the same you could say like, it was damned. Wait, wait. I can't follow. It's been delayed a couple of times, but this date has been set for years. How does that make sense? This date. Did I say yes? Oh, it was been yeah. while. I know that this Okay. Day... <laughs> well, wait, but if it's been delayed at all, how could the day have been set? Yeah. Well, no, That's I mean, why I'm like, confused, by. Fring, are you okay? Been set for a while. No, I'm, I'm definitely correct on this. This date has been set for a while, because I remember hearing about okay. conversations about it going up against... Or other films going up against So this delay... This date has been set since the last delay, is probably what you're saying. Yeah. And that was a long time ago. Okay. Last delay was a while ago. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, now I understand. By the way, in but, Halo uh, Infant... Oh, go ahead. Oh, that's actually it's not that important. By the way, in Halo Infinite, pulse carbine bolts move faster and track more aggressively the longer they're in the air, making it a dedicated long-range weapon. I don't know if that'll help you guys when using it. Hi, Rags. Hi, I still don't know how that gun works, nor shall I ever, because I haven't played that game since the 13 hours I played of it before our EFAP, and I haven't touched that game since. 
pretty sure the chatter is correct that, that uh that's a weapon that at short range is pretty much pitiful, but uh at longer ranges it's more useful. But I'm also in the same boat as Rags. I can't remember a lot of it because I haven't played that game in months. But yeah. hey, Warren Wolves comes out in like a week and it adds some stuff. You are very excited about that, right? Well, I mean I'm I will play it again, but I mean, what I'm more curious about is I want to see how many people get brought back, because I think that will be indicative of whether this game is fucked. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in the camp of, like, man, I, I don't know, you, you might, it might be over. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, two months and four days, that's it? What a pleb, I'm sitting on 15 months and two hours. I don't know what that's referring to, but yes. Hmm. Yeah, I do not know. Isn't the failure is good thumbnail from his last Jedi video? I faintly remember him rambling about failure for five minutes. I don't know. Kind of monotonous. Damn it, I'm not sure what that's referring to either. Me neither. Failure is good. We should good. really answer these faster. I don't know. It's like some of these we can answer very easily because they include oh, yeah. context, you know? Is um, the mic doing a blimp right now, or is it just because I'm tired and <laughs> quiet? Is what doing what? The mic. Flimping. Little Yours? bit. Alright. Uh, yeah. Adieu. Hi, Rags. Hello to you. Play my first game of Pathfinder in a month. I like playing DPS builds. What are some recommendations? Class and race don't matter. Oh, right. Class and race I... don't matter. Oh, I, I don't play enough of them, unfortunately. I'm, I'm looking to play more, but I I don't know enough about the the, the gamey aspects of it quite yet to really start offering recommendations. I know I typically like to play a bard sort of character. I'm big into the, the narrative aspect and the charisma things, and I uh, you know the, the bard gives you a lot of options in terms of being offensive or defensive or supporty, and I think it just fits me really well. And it's really easy to play, but I, I can I can't offer you much in the way of tactical advice all right uh the shields only counter projectile guns how about shock waves from explosions what about fire why not use napalm oh so this will be about dune again i think um dune. how about fire why not use napalm bombardment why not drop chemical weapons onto the battlefield um we had a long discussion about the nature of those shields it seems that the film provided its own counter to them, being those guns that shoot and then sort of drill and then get you. Seems like that should just be standard issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems like it. I mean, even then, right, when the bombs get dropped on the... The bombs slow down to go through the shields, but, like, if you just drop that bomb, the shield... I don't see how the shield could possibly protect you. Like, if you had a little shield, but there's an explosion, how does that protect you when the force still be exerted on you? Yeah, I can't remember if we get any examples of people dealing with explosions while having those shields on, but I can't imagine they, um, will be safe. I, I don't know. I don't see how they could be. You Dumbos need to watch Arcane. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> boy. Well, Again? won't you be oh. a happy boy? Well, they follow up and say, you need to do an EFAP audit, I'd invite Doomer and Theo on. Do it. Oh. We did. Oh. Wait a minute. That happened already. What also, time is it? I know, <laughs> it's crazy. This person predicted it all. Uh, also play DDLC. Do it. Perhaps. Someday. Uh, the shields only eliminate guns from person-to-person -person combat. Most battles would still just be fought by bombarding places from orbit. Um, You'd think you'd see more of that still? Than you did in Maybe the they would. I guess they wouldn't want to destroy a lot of the infrastructure of the city uh, with they totally a, do, a bombardment. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is if your other choice is that you've got to put your own soldiers on the ground with shields, you might just bomb. <laughs> like you know. Also, I can't remember. Did they intend to invade and and take over, or did they intend to invade and then leave? I assume that uh, the Harkonnens would get control of Arrakis back, right? In that case, yeah, you should probably have uh, wanted to avoid damage to the infrastructure too much, but maybe they figured it was uh, they worthwhile. They destroyed all the ships on the hangar, or on the, the airfield, but I don't know how much damage... I can't remember how much damage they did to the 
the city itself, or maybe they were specific with the buildings they targeted. I'm I'm not certain. I just can't remember. Uh huh. But yeah, if you want to preserve infrastructure, then is it Harkonnen or Harkonnen? I can't remember. Because in uh, I think the David Lynch movie pronounces it differently. I don't know what's supposed to be accurate. Hmm. Well, you missed my super chat. Okay, no, you didn't. How's Fringy? What? What? How was Fringy, Muller? <laughs> Confused, Fringy? apparently. Yeah. I'm, I'm tired. He's tired. Same thing, really. Also, tell him to Google yeah. Phil Philo Farnsworth for doubting my last super chat. No. Oh. <laughs> How do I spell that? Uh, P H I L O Fonsworth. Okay, so apparently he was an American inventor. Does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> I do not remember. recall that name. No. I don't either. Um, apparently, yeah. So he uh, he was instrumental in the early development of all electronic televisions. No. Oh. Is that, maybe that's why he's called Professor Farnsworth, like in reference to to this guy. Probably, yeah. I mean, it feels like the name is too specific for that not to be the case. Okay, but you learn something new every day. Gilbert. Thanks to Wikipedia. Um, nah, boys, I'm still here. Why? Because I'm poggers. Poggers. Good to hear there's some poggers people in the audience. Oh man, that's great. Nice PP. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, hey guys, have you seen the discourse surrounding video game difficulty? Surface partly due to Elden Ring's release. If all games should have an easy mode versus some shouldn't have an easy mode. Thoughts? Working uh, on a video right now uh, oh about that very topic. My conclusion. Because it is an interesting topic. Usually ends up with it's up to the developer. Leave him alone. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. I'm One must not. realize that I think a lot of the people who make that kind of uh, argument that things need to be easier for them, I, th I think there is a, an aspect of someone's character that kind of seeps into the, making that sort of argument. Um, I don't think that, I think even if we look at just someone's personality, not and it, not everyone could just flat out even make that argument. It, it has to come from a particular kind of person. Um, well, what I would say is that I think that the argument indicates um, a perspective on what video games are that is, I think, uh, like, it's almost this perspective that, well, difficulty is pretty arbitrary, right? Like, it's not, you know, it's not really that important, right? You can have games that are easy or normal or hard. Like, the difficulty doesn't really, it's not indicative of anything by way of the experience that the game is providing. And I think that's a really uh, reductive and simplistic perspective on what video games are. Because when you think about aspects of video games that, you know, provide an experience, the experience in the same way that you get out of a, you know, an experience from like watching a film or listening to music, right? They're, they all have unique aspects to them um, in terms of what they provide you. And video games, difficulty, the challenge, can be part of the experience. It can be a really important part of the experience, absolutely. depending on the game. And I think things that, that are too easy or too hard can absolutely change the experience. They can ruin it. Yeah, and I think it's it's a little bit. Of course, a lot of games do provide difficulty settings, but some games don't because they have a specific experience they're trying to create, and mm -hmm. I don't think that it's as easy as saying. Well, some people can't play that, so there's something wrong with this, like, you need to change the difficulty, that it's quite that simple. If the developer makes that choice, especially knowing that it means it will alienate some people, you know? Like, you need you need to do better than just, oh, some people can't play it, that's not really a... Uh, I just know? didn't know you yeah, could well. make something that doesn't alienate someone, just by virtue well, of whatever well, you've chosen well, as the component. Well, I mean, any video game, I think just the nature of, like, fail states being an aspect of, like, the majority of video games means there's always going to be someone who can't beat it, just necessarily. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I don't um, know, it feels like we're not too far away from just being like, I don't, this Mario Kart thing, like, if maybe there was a bit more violence, and, like, gore, if, if when you hit someone with a green shell, you know, a bit of flesh and blood come out, and it would be people like, what the fuck are you talking about? And you're like, well, it would just, <laughs> it would just make it feel a bit more I would like it more, real. yeah. Yeah. I'd like it more. Yeah. I think I'd be compelled maybe... to play on if, if that were happening. It's like, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, I mean, one of the things you learn as you grow older, and hopefully wiser, is that not everything's for you. Not everything should be for you. Yeah. We don't need violence in Mario Kart. It's violent enough. I don't know. Maybe there was a deliberate... You know, maybe there was a thought behind it having one difficulty setting and it being a difficult setting. You know? Like, it's, you know, it's not... We had all kinds of conversations about how they've done difficulty in Elden Ring in terms of... Uh, yeah. There's, there's no overt option. There just is in-game, depending on what mechanics you're going to engage with, and that's a way of doing it. And I don't know... If someone's only judging it from whether or not on the main menu it says easy, medium, or hard, then I feel like they shouldn't be talking about this one. Like, for Elden Ring, I mean. It's like, you got to play the game first. Uh... Um... Also, yes, Muller, it's me, the kiwi that wants you in a jar. I don't want to be. Put Muller in a jar? Sounds like it would be restrictive. Um, I, I suppose so. I work 12 hour shifts like many here in chat, and it helps me through these long tism shifts. Gotta say, you lads do good work all the time as usual and inspire many to think about things more critically. Very much appreciated. Very kind of you. Mm hmm. We do try as well as hopefully being more entertaining than a dry piece of bread, perhaps. The careful balance, you know. Mm. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, have you guys seen Eric Carter comparing Snyder Cut and Justice League? It's probably the worst review I've seen of them. To be fair, I don't know of any Joss Whedon's cut versus Snyder's cut that is even covered. Like... It does feel to me a little weird, because didn't we, um, when we first watched it, did we immediately conclude that Joss's cut was better? I can't remember. Um, I think, because I re-watched our video not terribly long ago, and I think that it, I think that from early on we started to notice the differences. Because, yeah. And we, for the most part even early on started to lean towards Whedon's version was better, yes. I remember correctly, um, Southpaw was the one that was sort of looking out for additional content that was shitty. And what we concluded at, like, the halfway mark, I think, was the only thing Whedon had added at this point that was bad, that wasn't in Snyder's version, was the weird scene with Batman at the beginning of his cut, where he, like, he blows up an alien the wall, onto a wall, yeah. and yeah, all that shit. Um, which, yes, yes it's uh, stupid and bad, but Snyder had way more additional scenes that are fucking bullshit. Yeah, and he took out ones that were meaningful for character stuff. And well, a lot that's of what I ended up finding out, right? Characters really because I remember when I was making the video, I was just curious, like, what were those scenes with Batman and Wonder Woman and stuff? And it's like, holy fuck, he provided arcs for both of them. They're, they're not, like, particularly compelling in a wider context because of, like, it's clearly stapled on. It's like an attempt to be like, look, Batman's aware of his mortality and he wants to make sure that the Justice League have a leader and he's he's the one who's suffering in these fights. Having him be bruised and, and like, struggling after the fights he's been in alongside, I was like, that just seems like a necessary component of, of his, like, role in the Justice League, that he's, like, one of the only ones that can actually be hurt. Um, and that was included. It wasn't in the Snyder's version. And then, of course, Wonder Woman basically explaining that they, like, it, uh, there's, there's a scene in Whedon's version that helps to actually justify Wonder Woman's insanity of basically not, like, appearing very much at all in the world, despite being there for, like, decades and crime happening, you know? And she says that she feels that when she gets involved or when people listen to her that people get killed because of Steve, and it's like, ah, that's something. something. Yeah. That's a yeah. thing. That's a thing. I know what a thing is. And, like, I've seen a couple of comparisons, and I haven't seen anybody uh, compare that, and I wonder if it's just because it's just not a popular position to have. Like, there's just no point, because nobody's going to agree with you, except maybe a couple of guys on a podcast that runs 12 hours at a time. That's people who paid attention. I mean, <laughs> Actually, that's how it... Who remember the Whedon version, because apparently not a lot of people did? I mean, it's because it's, it, it's really bad and cringe, but, like, so is the Snyder version. 
It's mega cringe. At least Whedon's version, when it makes me cringe, I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's cute. <laughs> you know, it's instead cute of cute cringe. Going, oh, <laughs> this is trying to be so edgy. Well, I downright enjoy Ooh. the lines he gave Superman. Hey, is this guy bothering you? And punches him. That's fucking great. More of that. Uh, it makes me smile. It really does. I'm smiling now. Just thinking about it. It's the closest Henry Henry Cavill got to be able to play Superman, and everyone like thinks that all the additional scenes are worthless. I don't know. Sounds like a Boy Scout line to me. Uh. Hmm. Uh, EFAP, the closer look, far from home video. He has great lines like, "We like active characters because they're the ones that do things." Oh. Is it bad that I believe that that is a quote? <laughs> oh, I can absolutely. If you went to someone and said, "Hey, an active character. That's a character who does something, right?" And they'll be like, "Yeah." Well, but that—that's fine. It's when you—I mean, that's fine enough, right? But like, it's when you say that's why we like them because they do things. I'd be like, "Well, that's not really enough, is it?" <laughs> like, do yeah, things. I mean, like, I, everyone do things. You can't not be doing anything. Yeah, there's gotta be you something. You're always doing to. something. Like, we say not doing anything in, a, like, a, a colloquial sense, but, you know, a character is always going to be written to be doing a thing. It's the kind of thing where... Because I enjoy thinking about all these subjects, when it's just, like, fundamental writing, sort of, understand rules of thumb, and you're just, like, active protagonist, that's true, right? And then you're like, well, what about these this handful of movies that go against that? What does that mean, then? And it's like, huh. What is it, then, that we... Because, like, it does... It just seemed to be agreeable. You like active protagonists, correct? And it's gonna be- it's, you gotta do better than saying, because they do stuff. It's gotta be something to do with, the like, The reason you know, I hate characters is because they do stuff. Exactly, that yeah. stuff is mm. dumb. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Stop it! Don't climb in that well, you idiot! Yeah, Why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that? It's so dumb! We knew that was gonna happen. I'm pretty sure I said, like, at the halfway mark, that he seems like the kind of character they'll just wipe out randomly. And they did. Yeah, because I was saying that he's basically the most normal person here who doesn't seem to have anything, like, wrong with him. Mm -hmm. Which is why that comes out of the blue, and it's so bizarre that he just makes that decision. That shockingly stupid decision, just out of nowhere. Yeah, like, we need to have him gone. Like, yeah, I guess you do. <sighs> um, is Civil War or Dune better to you? So, ooh, uh, wow, they offer entirely different experiences, I feel. Um, this is the thing. You get the certain uh, bits out of the way. I prefer Civil War, and I prefer Civil War's characters. Yes. However, <laughs> Dune is um, kind of incredible uh, in terms of its... I'm trying to go for, like, maybe scope and atmosphere and then wheel building. Like, yeah, these things are... it is a... It's it's more of an experience movie, I guess you could say. Cool. Um, but I like Civil War more, but hmm, yeah, they're just very different. Very different. It's hard movies. to say. Um, kind of. I wouldn't know how to level out all this, and and I would like to see Dune um, two, see if yeah. that uh, Dune -er? sort of see what it does Dunes? for Dune one as a part one to its part two. Dune we'll have Dune, and then we'll have Dunes. Yes. Dune, and then the third one, Dune Resurrection, maybe? Dune 3, yeah. Hi, Rags. Hello. Who are the most attractive women warriors in fiction, and why is it the Sisters of Battle? I don't know too much about the Sisters of Battle, uh, only that they exist. As far as attractive women warriors in games, um... Um, I'd have to sort of stop and think, because a lot of the times when I see these super, super little scrawny skin women who are warriors and they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with big guys, it makes me just, like, roll my eyes and not be attracted to that, because it's so outlandish to me. Um, so, and, and, and you see that so often that sometimes it's hard to... Attractive female warriors... Um, I mean, well, of course, Gal Gadot is very attractive, right? In terms of her appearance. 
I wouldn't want to like hang around her for a long time because she's kind of a psycho. And... What about um, Lara Croft Tomb Raider account? Ooh, which one? Uh, do you mean from which movie? Because we, we have, yeah, I mean we have the game ones, which I'm I, I'm attracted to that because she's very very fit and athletic. She's got those big strong legs for the jump jumping up in the air, 13 feet. Uh, she uses guns. No, uh, we have uh, we have Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider. Oh, they made that one recently. The the remake Tomb Raider movie. I saw that in theaters and it was a movie. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I was. Uh, Oh yeah, because there's the two movie franchises, of course, as well. I was more so just talking about the movie. But funnily enough, I kind of just for a second there forgot that the, the Alicia Vikander is like the other one. Yeah, I something yeah. like that. I think so. That movie was, it was an inoffensive action movie, I suppose. It was just, it was very generic, but there was some neat stuff in there. Mm. Um, I. If I if I'm if we're going into fantasy, I think some there's something that a, there there is a let's see you have like different elves and orcs and you have the char and all sorts of other fantasy sort of races that can be nifty if they're done well. I'm not typically into the super slender, mega athletic like elf types. Those generally just aren't quite my thing. Galadriel doesn't do um, it. For you. Uh, well. Oh yeah, she's a warrior now. Yeah, they're redoing her history to where she's definitely a super badass warrior in the past. Yeah, that's true. Um. Hmm. I'm just, I'm just sort of, I'm just thinking. I, I like Ellen Ripley. If you could call her a warrior, I suppose you could. Um, in, in a sense. Uh, she uses her skill sets well. She doesn't do anything that is not believable for her character to do, like physically or, or mentally. She has a lot of drive and she's very brave. She is, and, and I think that's one of her most appealing traits is that she is vulnerable. She can be hurt and she is essentially just oh, yeah. a, a mortal human, but Dude, she still I, goes like, to do very brave things and you not know, knowing at the risk. It's what I often think about almost immediately with the uh, aliens is how much I love the characterization at the point where one of the first things we get from her is like the, she has that nightmare where the, she's uh, the aliens bursting out of her and um, yeah. she's like terrified and she refuses to go back to LV-426 but then mm -hmm. when she's actually there once all of it's engaged and once uh, Gorman the commander is like out of his mind doesn't know what to do because he's panicking she takes control and actually like gets things yep. in order it's just like oh god it's so satisfying like absolutely and it's like she you know she's terrified but she knows she that if we don't with her. act now it'll be much worse yeah she, she gets along with all of the people she's not trying to one up over everybody it's not like you know the the girl power thing you have now she doesn't shut people down so that she can rise up she uses people's abilities you know and, and she, she she's charismatic in a sense with certain people she gets along with some more than others kind of like how a normal person would be in that oh, sense yeah. um if you remember, like, they're all laughing at the idea that they're going to be killed by bugs. And then she, like, tries to explain it killed her entire crew. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, like, I just feel like it gives full respect to the first film as well. But some people don't like aliens very much because it, it makes... And they're it, wrong! <laughs> we should <laughs> kill them! <laughs> Oh no, I mean, yeah, no, uh... In Minecraft, it's um, a different thing. I, I, for those who don't know, I prefer Aliens to Alien, uh, but they're both great. They're both really great. Um, I just have my preference. What about you, Metal and Fringy, about Alien vs. Aliens? I haven't, only, I haven't watched them that many times, and it's been a while since I watched them, so I don't know which one I prefer, to be honest. Um, I do like them both as well, though. It'd probably be aliens, but it's it's close. I like them both, just in different ways, I guess. Different genres, but both great. Alien is objectively better. Aliens is better. Aliens greater than aliens. <laughs> Haven't seen either. Thunder, what the fuck? Thunder, wow, what really? The... Wow. Somebody has homework. That is odd. I believe that guy's a mod in this chair and that's fucking cringe. Oh, that's fucking cringe, man. Banned. <laughs> this next one says, Fringy, blink twice if you're a political prisoner. 
<laughs> I don't think I uh, haven't got the animations for the um for the the, the profile picture. Well, I guess they'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> and Jesus. you will never be safe. Um, Arcane is fine. Bricks with the style make me want Bioshock and Borderlands show. If you want more Harley Quinn, even says the word toots and shaved side head pro tag that calls her GF Cupcake constantly. I don't like okay. it. Okay. No, I don't like it, Mahler. I don't like this. I don't know I the... I don't like this comment. Um, I'm not sure what they mean by tricks with the style. Maybe he's talking about how the animation style tricks people into thinking it's better than Viz? I hope that's not what he's saying. Or she. I think that's what he's implying. Um. Yeah, just the if you want more Harley Quinn. This is like, dude. What's wrong dude. with you? What? <laughs> what are you doing? What, what are you doing? doing? Stop it! You did. <laughs> like shaved head things. It's like, look, false positive. They have this hair and. In the game from 20 when they introduced him in 2012 this was before all the cringe so <laughs> they should be allowed to have it ah yes in the time before the cringe <laughs> for cringe was invented by Erdl cringe captain of the guard when joss whedon invented cringe in justice league <laughs> <laughs> uh Hey lads, I've heard some of you recommend Buffy, and I'm curious what you think specifically it starts getting good, starting season 2 right now. Hmm. Let's put it this way, if you want specifics, because I can give specifics. It's season 2, episode 17, that is the first episode of the entire show that makes you go, Huh. That wasn't shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Honestly, it's quite a bit better than shit, and so you're like, what? What is? What's? What's going on here? And then me, as a person who you may be watching it with at the time, would be like, well, it's an anomaly in this season. It ain't an anomaly <laughs> once you get further on. And it's like, ooh. So if you really like that episode, and uh, that's the kind of content you'd be waiting for, then you don't have to wait too long. But um, yeah, th that episode and then the finale for season two—they're both pretty good content-wise, and I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Fringy, you were like, yeah, they were neat, but, you know, not... It took a while. Yeah, it's not, we're yeah. not We're not doing, you know, great. And then season three, which is pretty solid throughout, it's a good season. Um, but it, once you've seen two bad seasons before that, it still takes a while for, to, to gain your trust. Uh, how it works. And four is a bit bumpy, and then five is really solid, so... Where does it get good? Uh, season three, I would say. Yeah. Um. Hmm? Seth Rogen and Sarah Silverman present Santa Inc. A.K.A. Beginner's Guide to the Semitic Interrogative? Interrogative? Interrogative. Interrogative. My bad. Hi, Rags. Metal, I love you. Hi. I um, think I'm gonna, cause I've got all the files and stuff for it. Um, I might make it like a, like a summer thing, like a, like a Christmas in July sort of thing. It, dead of summer. Uh, cover uh, Santa Inc. because I've, I've got all the stuff for it. Not a better time to cover uh, it, right? Like, just yeah. I don't want to ruin my Christmas with that show. You want to ruin your summer? I want to ruin. I want to <laughs> ruin my July with that show. Christmas is. I have to keep Christmas pure. Yeah, well, we might not be if we watch Jingle All the Way too. So that's gonna be bad. Oh yeah, he's not right. even in it. Oh no! Mistake. Turbo man, <laughs> put that cookie down. But, uh, the flying midget, man. I don't know. <laughs> if there ain't no flying midgets, <laughs> we're gonna be having some issues. That was Worthless. a joy. The whole film's a joy. That film is a joy. I doubt the sequel will be as joyous. <laughs> um, y'all see not last night in Soho yet? Not quite as good as Cornetto, and there were some tisms at the end. But all in all, a decent time. IMO. Also, high rags and others, I guess. Scritches for the fun. Yeah, hello. Uh, I have not seen it. Neither has any of us, I think. No. Yeah. No. But um, it's, it's, it'll happen eventually. I intend to. I just have no drive to see it. N literally, fucking <laughs> nobody recommended it really at all. And then of the people who saw it, I only ever hear like, well, 
It's not as good as his other stuff. It's like, oh. But maybe it'll turn out to be the best thing ever. Who knows? Fuck, Mary kill, drunk, rags, unmasked, mauler, and German metal. German metal? Crazy yeah, variable. Instead of the, the, the Ugandan one. Um... Well, I um, I just you I know, can't answer uh, this because of bias. I, mean, I, I feel like, to remove I feel myself like I'm just going to die bias. straight ahead. That's just how it works. I just well, die. I did say German metal, so no. And we can't take our chances. It's better, better not. Mm -hmm. Gingerbread Fringy says, "Do you know the Muffin Man?" He would. Muffin Man. Oh yeah. Yes, that's yes I know the Muffin Man. I could go for a muffin. Sounds great. He's um, married to the muffin man. The muffin man? <laughs> He's married to the muffin man. <laughs> <laughs> I stand by that scene. It's funny as fuck. It's so good. It is. It is. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you. <laughs> he just tells him the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be fun to see that again and record it. It'll be great. Oh, Shrek is a miracle. Yeah, because I've only seen I've seen one and two many times. I saw the third one once, and I guess there's a fourth, but I haven't seen it. And there was like a Christmas special they did with Shrek. What they did with fucking Ice Age. Yeah. And they just didn't stop. It was. It wouldn't be bad if they didn't stop, and it was still good. Yeah, I mean, when we start, hopefully we can start really making a lot of these EFAP movies and things, because watching these series that start out really good, like, you know, Shrek and Ice Age, and seeing just where they go, and not so much where they go, where they don't stop, mm. um, mm -hmm. is might be interesting. Um, hey, Moobla. Hello. Wrongy. Hi. And Riggles. Oh, hi there. And mute. Is that mess? Mutal. Muted. Just wanted to let you guys know, the first Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 trailer just dropped. Um, oh. yeah, that would that have been a while ago, the, uh, the little teaser yeah. type thing. Oh, okay. I generally don't watch the trailers. Ago. Um, <clears throat> maybe. Oh, get... check out this one. Do not watch the new Resident Evil movie. Watched it last night with a friend and made fun of it the whole time. I'll take the PWSA movies any day. Also, Merry Christmas, Rags. Oh, Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, I've heard it's really bad. Yeah. I watched Weekend Warriors video on it, and it seems like a really bad movie. That I yeah. would, I mean, I would want to watch it, well, though, because I'm why would you tell us, to compare it. EFAP, yeah. that you shouldn't watch a movie because me and a friend watched it and made fun of it throughout. It's like, that sounds perfect. Yeah, Great. that sounds like exactly <laughs> the kind of movie we would be wanting to see. So, uh, you yeah, we will, you will likely see it one day on, on, on the docket, on the roster. On the docket. Uh, just got a $2 raise, so here's the dosh. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, Rags. Hello. What's the best battlefield and why is it for? Um. You recently said it was five, right? Possibly. I it, I think an argument could legitimately be made for five. Uh, four is really good. I think one is quite good. They all have their little issues and differences. Um, but, I mean, if I... Because generally, I played... I got to 1,000 hours in Battlefield 1, or just about. Then 2042 came out. So I stopped playing 2042 very quickly. Because that sucks. And then I tried Battlefield 5. Kind of, I love it. I think Battlefield 5 is my favorite um, Battlefield game. As for which one's the best, I'm not certain. I'm really mm. not. They all have sort of their little ups and downs and advantages and disadvantages in terms of design and balance. Um, but yeah, it's really tough to say. I think a case can be made for a lot of them though. Four, uh, yeah, both four, one, five. There, there's definitely, and, and I don't remember enough of Bad Company Two as much as I played it. It was just a long time ago that I really sunk a lot of hours into it. So maybe that's the case. I don't know, but 
Do you guys remember the Battlefield 2042 came out last year? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, it, what's uh, it, it some kind of spin off or? Well, it feels that know, way. Like, hey, Dave, it wasn't fine game, but like, came out and nobody talks about it anymore. Hey, they finally have voice over IP. Might be a game that comes out to go back. No one talks about it anymore. You talking about Halo Infinite? That's the one, right? Oh no, that's the other shooter. Right? Oh. No. <laughs> Man, what a ter and I also, nobody talks about Vanguard. <laughs> 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 You know what everyone is talking about? Elden Ring! Oh, I know yeah. that game. Ew. Uh... Also, DRG is fantastic. It is. Yeah, it is. Deep Rock Galactic is really good, and I'd highly recommend it. It'll is there happen. a new update coming out DRG the big one? Happen. Also, season, also play out the wild, Glorm. That's, that's the end of the map. Oh. Yeah, those are the two games that keep getting recommended, so. Little glorms. Uh, Fringy, apparently they're putting large concentrations of people into camps there in Aussie land. Don't you think that's kind of effed up? Also high rags. Hello. I, I, like, actually have no idea what you're talking about. Neither do I. Why are we talking about Dune? Spider-Man's coming out. There's not just No Way Home, but Spider-Verse 2 just dropped a trailer and release date. Yeah, and Spider-Verse, uh, No Way Home came out, covered it, and there's still interesting takes on the internet regarding that film. Who would have thought? In political news, a new variant has appeared and is spreading. It is believed to have spread in a Scotland pub. The man who is now, the man who has it is now selling it to others. Get your drink a plushie today. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm afraid, well, to be fair, you can't get that plush anymore. Variant. That that was an old, yeah. old promotion. But, but you can get the J one. Yeah, it is. It's gonna, is still available? for another day or two. Oh, yeah, I, I so. ordered mine yesterday. You should yeah, too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I got mine. I grabbed uh, me a J. Seven. I can kick can it go all up I there want. On my, can go up there and just play to the rags and the mutually one. <laughs> Have any of you tried Sniper Ghost Contracts 1 or 2, also high rags? Hi. Uh, uh, no, I have not. I have not. I've not. I've not even heard of it. Sniper Ghost Contracts. I've heard of Sniper Ghost Warrior. Remember that? The three power. of them in there. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. This video game. I remember those words. Mm-hmm. All right, so... That's it for that catch-up. This is a, now this one's called the Spider-Man catch-up. Spondo! Catching up with Spider-Man catch-up. Who knows what we'll get in terms of questions. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Thoughts on mainstream... Wait, switch mainstream to Wednesday instead. No. Oh. Oh, they're asking if we can... No, well, yeah. The, why would... We, you, Saturday, people are much more likely to be free and available than Wednesday. Yeah, why Why would we swap? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> if you wanted to get... <laughs> I'm assuming the reason, maybe they have, their job is like they have a Wednesday free and they're like, makes more sense to be on Wednesday, doesn't it? <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> maybe if I no? ask nicely. <laughs> so, fair question to ask, I suppose, but uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty happy with all Wednesday being the day. Uh, for, for catch up and, and Saturday being the day. Same day. Sorry, boys. Haven't had the chance to see the film yet, all far from home, uh, for that matter. So I have to catch up on this later. Um, oh, okay. Fair enough. Ooh, yeah. Well. Do you think the spell revived Gwen Stacy, but she was brought back falling again? Like, is she just lying dead in a power plant during this? Wait, why? Why? Why would it do that? I don't think the spell resurrected people. It, it grabbed no, no, them before they died, is what they all say. We knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. She knew. If it teleported her right before she hit her head, and then she teleports back at the end, that probably would be fine. She'd just be like... Because the momentum would have stopped. Well, then again, when she first teleported, she would have slammed into something. <laughs> just pile of meat somewhere, if it would have chosen to teleport her, but obviously it didn't teleport all of the infinite versions of everyone, just a 
the selection. And hope. Yeah. I'm not willing, usually not willing to pay Disney dollar to the point of refusing to buy any Blu-ray film even remotely connected to the company, such as Fox, MCU, etc. But this is so big of a cultural event to pass is too big of a cultural event to pass off with all the IPs. Um, I mean, No Way Home is a Sony movie, so. Well, I guess he said Maybe. anything that includes them tangentially as well. Five percent of the box office revenue. I mean, yeah, hey, yeah sure. even I mean, a penny. Yeah. Also, Mooples, watch the Mothman Prophecies, you dumbass. I'll make you eat your plushie. Hey. I want to eat a plushie. Yeah, don't do that. Um, Dino Fun Fact of, of the Day coming up next. Ooh. All right, yeah. Ooh, all right. Don't keep me waiting. I gotta know. Um, how do we know the villains don't just revert back to how they were before they came over or just disappear? We just believe strange? The timelines change? I think that's a fair assumption to make, but I guess they can't know for sure. Like, they, they couldn't have a guarantee that they'll all be safe when they go back, but, I mean, Peter's investment was to at least try to help them with their assorted predicaments beforehand. Um, I think it's fair. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Are the Spoodermans who the villains go back to the same one in the movie? Would they not then know they were cured? We just have to think of it uh, piece by piece, right? Doc Ock, depending on how far into his uh, journey he is, he's at the very least going to sacrifice himself to stop the machine, or it'll be early enough that he can be like, holy fuck, I've got my inhibitor chip back, I'm sorry, this is all a disaster, uh, let's stop the machine and figure out what we're doing, sort of thing. Like, that'll work. Electro will be an electricless guy in the power plant fight, and he'll just fall over and be like, oh. <laughs> and Andrew Garfield will be like, oh. And he's like, yeah, hey, man. Uh, I don't know. I got a lot of things that happened. I don't know. Uh, Sandman? Uh, he'll just be Flint Marco hanging out without sand. Uh, Lizard will just be scientist man. Yeah. Uh, and then Green Goblin. He'll be, he'll be just be Norman. And doing his thing. Basically, like, this is something we talked about in the, in the stream. It's just that some people be like, well, just because they don't have powers doesn't mean they won't do evil things. And it's like, well, sure, but like a, a lot of them in this circumstance were only able to do the kind of things that they were doing because of their powers. Um, what is Electro going to do without his Electro power? Um, and that doesn't mean he shouldn't go to prison for the stuff he's done. And I would hope that Andrew Garfield would uh, facilitate that in some way, maybe. Because at that point, Electro would kill people, right? Yes. Don't you know? He's Electro. Oh. Mm-hmm. I loved when Sandman showed up but hated when he later was like, guess I'm evil now, leaves, and then only attacks the Spider-Man. Why does no one understand what Sandman did in that movie? Uh, hmm. So, like, listen to all of his dialogue. He's just here. And he helps out Spider-Man because he's friends with Spider-Man at the end of Spider-Man 3. And then he gets teleported into a prison, and he's like, the fuck? What are you doing? And then the circumstances are explained to him, and he says explicitly, I want to get back to my daughter. And then he finds out that the only way he's going to be sent back is if Peter is able to cure everybody first. He agrees, reluctantly. He even says this to Electro. He's just like, that's the only way we're getting back. And he even says to Electro, don't fuck around with the electric thing on your chest. Because that leads to me getting to my daughter. And then everyone fucks around, and so he leaves. Or, like, he starts up a sandstorm and then leaves. And when he comes back... Um, in fact, this is something I noticed on a recent uh, watch-through. Electro uh, hits Sandman in the near the beginning of the big fight at the end. He, um, Sandman grabs Peter, and he's like, where's the box? Because Sandman wants to just press the button on the box to activate it so he can go home. He's just also around the villains at the time. And Electro likes, uh, electrocutes a bunch of things, destroys them, and he makes a tower fall on Sandman, which uh, frees up Peter. Um, I guess I'd need to rewatch it to know if it was definitely on purpose, but Sandman has his, he's on his own team. He's not just evil. He wants to, he doesn't even want to kill the Spider-Man, he just wants to activate the spell. 
But for some reason, everyone is like, Sandman was done dirty, he's become a villain now. And it's just like, what, what are we, what's happening? Mm. Don't get it. Hearing Otto destroys his redemption in Spider-Man 2. What? I don't know. I don't know why that would... He has his... So Spider-Man 2 know, is just I an think... alternate continuity. Yeah. This is something that this is something of its own here. Like if you have any concern, but I don't even know why that would destroy his redemption. I don't know. I'm trying to think through it. Like why would? Because the the reality is that he manages to overpower the voices in his head from the the tentacles at the end of Spider-Man Two. In, in the version where he gets sent back, he's back in control, and so would likely uh, sacrifice himself to save, theoretically, the world, I think. Um, which, to me, is still a redemption. In fact, it's not... It's kind of an awkward thing to say, redemption, when it was never him in control, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that is true. It's a bit of a difficult one to sort of... Explain, but I can understand the, the pulling in a redemption. I, I think, yeah, yeah, I think I understand what they mean by that. Uh, curing all the villains means he can cure any future villains moving forward. Sounds like bad writing. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> what? What about why would? Do you see how long it took to even figure out what the cures, quote unquote, would be for these people? And then when they start attacking, it becomes incredibly difficult to uh, cure them, quote unquote. And I don't know why that wouldn't. It's like, yeah, Peter's always going to make efforts to disable the opponent without killing them. That's always been part of Spider-Man. I don't know why that would, would be some kind of, like, new, annoying, terrible thing. Um, he just doesn't... Well, he won't have access to the, um... The replicator synthesizer? I can't remember what it's called. Well, not anymore, no. No, so... He has much less access to being able to create cures for whatever bad guy he fights, but... Like, you know, if he was to fight Venom, I don't think that machine can come up with a cure for Venom. I don't see how it possibly could. Yeah. And also, you can't come up with a cure for someone who just chooses to do bad things. Exactly, yeah. He has like, dealing what's with... the cure for Vulture or Mysterio? There is no Ray cure. Gale, right? Yeah, you just gotta destroy the tech the, the normal way, which is what he does anyway. It's interesting that the elemental villains were in a forest and the science-based villains were in the city. Um, I suppose so. Like, I think I see what they're going for. Well, here. Lizard was in a sewer. <laughs> I guess that, yeah, that would count as a city. Lizard along. That's where lizards are from. The sewer. Uh, movie is the pinnacle of the disgusting weaponized nostalgia trend in movies. Just please clap here. Moments that prey on audiences love for the older movies. Ready Player One of comic book movies. Holy shit, man. Wow, you did not like this film. I <laughs> very much disagree. I think that is totally wrong. No Way Home is that thing done right. The closest we're going to get to it being done right. I don't think we'll ever get better than that. Yeah. Actually juggling that much nostalgia. Um... Seriously, we want them to do it that way. We want them to bring these people in, add to their stories, and treat them with respect. That's like the whole goal. Um, did you know that Pteranodon and Pterodactylus and all other flying reptiles are not dinosaurs despite people making that mistake of thinking they are? They are actually pterosaurs, pterosaurs. completely separate from dinosaurs. Yeah, they're, but you know, they're, they're similar. It, it, a lot of the time, you know, it goes back so far either way, and they kind of look like them that people just put them together, you know how it is. Isn't there like a fun fact of we're closer to the T-Rex than the T-Rex is to the Stegosaurus? Something, Something like, like that. that. It wouldn't surprise me at all because the, what, what we would very broadly refer to as dinosaurs spans a very massive period yeah. of time in Earth history. It's just a way for getting people to understand something quickly, even if it was, like, broadly... I don't want to say inaccurate, but broadly lacking detail. But, um, yeah, fair enough. 
Springy loved your video on 12 Angry Men, although it may not be flawless because I don't think a judge would ever let the executioner be a juror. Uh, oh, you mean like in the uh, the process when they're selecting jurors? Well, problem is that, that doesn't come out straight away. So it's kind of, that's something that becomes more apparent as the story goes on. But I mean, there are other things to talk about in that film in terms of like, I guess, adhering to the strict legality of what would happen in that situation. I'm mm. pretty sure there's a lot of conversation around whether or not like whether whether what is even presented you know as the counter arguments would meet what is generally considered to be the threshold of reasonable doubt um yeah but I'm glad you like the movie at uh, the, the video <laughs> i hope you like the movie as well mm -hmm. uh y'all should check out media zealot turns out sauron and syndrome aren't good villains interesting what do you, it turns out that Syndrome isn't a good villain. I mean, I'm assuming they're saying that's what that uh, that that person has made a video about. Um, ah, all right. Interesting. Where is where is Gotham High, Jay Longbow? I think she. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to make those, so it comes and goes. It's it's kind of like my TFA series, okay? Some other stuff you got to cover. Some other fish to fry in between. But yes, we'll all be looking forward to um. Whenever she comes out with them, the good stuff. Oh yeah. Nick Fury has been off world for a year. That's just, it's just in quotes. I don't know if the their point being made or I don't know what to do with that. Mm. Alright. Yeah, just done it. Merry Christmas everyone. The meth bear cometh for all. Oh, that's nice. Get some three meth. I was hoping for a Harry and Norman reunion at some point. Well, Harry's not even in it, right? And I don't think James Franco is in the position to be getting movie roles right now. Um, Flash bursts in. On it. Am I too soon? It's I'm too soon. It's May. May's the key. You were right about the six. You were always right about them. Fear them. Yeah, you could, you could have that. It would be great for the MCU at this point. But if it's Asma and Miller, he should, uh, should take a little visit to Florida in universe. Uh, fight crime. Fly, fight crime in Florida. He has to take on Florida, man. Yeah. <laughs> Gang, there's a snake in the grass. The only difference between Jay and Movie Bob is delivery speed. Kick Jay to kick Bob it. I, mean, I, I think there's a few more differences between Jay and Movie Bob. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One or two. Um, my line. That's what you have taken from me, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> the Uncle Ben would say that. I'm sure in his solo movie. The theater I work at is overrun because of Spider-Man. Can't find ho oh Spider-Man can't find home. Yeah. Well, it, it was a pretty popular movie. A lot of people wanted to see it. Hi, I'm back. I liked the movie. Logistically, the film's a mess, but I love what they did with all the Peters and other character interactions. As did I. Um, Doctor slash Peter made dumb to start the plot is bad, and neither does the spell itself make sense. They might forget, but the internet has it forever. Um, yeah, uh, the spell... We tried to, like, break down how the spell could make sense, and we were running out of options, like... Yeah. It's a, it's a really fucked spell, and then... A lot of things that need to be removed from that spell, or by that spell, rather. Yeah. Um, for it to work. And I still think it's Doctor Strange that's the super retard in the uh, opening. Super? Well, I think Peter's can be explained by his desperation and naivety. Love Andrew giving Tony a back crack because he's just a much older Spidey and swinging takes a toll. Yeah, and it's also a fun meta thing. Um, Black Spider-Man joke was funny as fuck. I mean, a lot of people didn't like it apparently, but I thought it was fun. I thought it was funny. Just the Andrew Garfield saying, oh, I'm sorry <laughs> for not being black. <laughs> like, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> 
And at that point in the movie, he's completely won the audience over. So it's just like, just like him as like being this guy who's just trying to be helpful. Wait, Jay, you check a huge diversity box and you're a nerd. You actually could potentially have a chance if you applied. Save the MCU, save the dream. <laughs> Jay is save the new. The uh, wait, what hero could Jay play? Yeah. Wolverine, maybe. See how it goes. Uh, chat, ask Timmy. I guess they mean Tizmy? Fringy, I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. Oh, God. Rude. Horrifying. Bully Fringy. Um, if we got good writers, I would take a TASM 3 right now. I mean, we have good writers. Then we got good anyone. writers, yeah. Pretty much. Give me whatever you want if you got good writers. Go for it. Um, never stop arguing with chat. I love it. Oh, I mean, you'll, you'll find <laughs> it here. Chat is pure bipolarism, even imatism, utisms. Damn. Poor chat. Not going to watch since I haven't seen Far From Home yet. I'm happy for you Dumbos, or sorry that happened. Either way, play Doki Doki Literature Club. Perhaps. Perhaps. Doki Doki. So I haven't seen this movie yet, but is this film a yeah or a nah for me? Yeah. I don't know what it is I for you. It's a yeah. Yeah. We give it a yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, even. Hmm. Can't listen today, gonna see it tomorrow. Hello all, and hello future me. Hello future you. Hey, hello up? future you. What's Sandman's motivation to fight the Spider-Man? He lives after Spidey 3 on good terms with Toby, wants to see his daughter. He should help them. So, he doesn't think that uh, the button's gonna be pressed anytime soon because they're all fucking around with cures and all that kind of shit. And then Doctor Strange says in front of him, the, like, the spell's becoming unstable, and we're running out of time to do the thing, and so he's just, like, desperately trying to... Because I think they even say that he's about to press the button on the on the box. It gets to be that simple in terms of what will make the spell happen. Um, or rather, what will control the, the spell back down to not being a thing. So Samman wants to get back to his daughter, and he's not convinced that Peter's going to be able to cure anybody and, and sort all that shit out. Which is pretty in line with his motivation from Spider-Man 3. He is a good man, but he also wants to get back to his daughter. Because uh, she dying, and he probably hasn't saved her yet. I figured out the Zendaya hate from the FNT community. She's getting boned by Tom Holland and they understandably are jealous. No need to hate. The... Oh, dude, I know plenty of people who aren't happy with her as, like, a character. And I think that... If you look at the trilogy, No Way Home is the one that I think does the best job for her. Um, because Homecoming introduces her, and you get very little. Far From Home gives you some development. No Way Home makes a very meaningful effort to uh, have her position matter at that point. And I think people are much more used to Spider-Man having a very involved girlfriend, like um, Mary Jane is in the Raimi ones. Mm. Like, I can understand why people aren't as much of a fan of her compared, but I just don't think she was as much of a focus in this trilogy compared to the Raimi one. Or, rather, the role of Adam, Peter's girlfriend. Um. Alfred Molina came back for a paycheck and delivered another standard Great Molina performance. Give it up for Alfred Molina. Enthused clapping. I thought he was great as Doc Ock. He's... Yeah. Yo, why is this? Give it up to the man with the metal tentacles. Aussies that don't watch the Big Les show are no true Scotsman. Oh. Alright. Spider-Man? Spider-Man friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Wealth and fame. He's ignored. Action is his reward. 60s Spider-Man theme. Really fits the end. Fair enough. Uh, Strange is God's manager. Not sure what you mean by that. Uh, Strange uh, is God's manager. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> oh, this. 
There's an I issue. I have no idea what that's trying to say. There's an issue with the ending's implications in that Spider-Man should still be a member of the Avengers or should at least rejoin them soon. Note how he was approached by Tony Stark in Civil War. So it's not only that. It's that what has been forgotten isn't even that Spider-Man was a thing. It's that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, right? Like that's been forgotten. But nobody knows Peter but, Parker. Well, what's been forgotten is that Peter Parker as a person. He doesn't exist. Right, and so therefore, so Spider-Man was still a thing that happened, he just never revealed his identity to anybody on the Avengers team. That's what the continuity would have to be now. Yeah. The problem with that, I guess, then, is that it shouldn't be too hard for him to regain... a lot of that stuff, thinking about it, because, like, let's say an Avengers event happens, and he turns up, they would be like, it's Spider-Man, and then he could be like, take off the mask, not that he would, but he could take off the mask and be like, I'm Peter Parker, by the way, now provide me resources to assist. Like, that is still an option he necessarily has. Because, mm -hmm. you know, who's, who else? Like, it's not like he can uh, impersonate Spider-Man. Nobody else can do what he can do. But yeah, you're also correct that if he starts um, doing his superhero thing, then that should get on people's radars. People including Doctor Strange, but not limited to. We'll have to see what they decide to try and do. Uh, saying the great power line belongs to Ben is bullshit anyway, because in the original comic, the narration box says it, not Ben. I just, I, I don't know, man. I just feel like a, I have the controversial POV of, I think they did a great job with uh, having Aunt May say it in this one. Yeah, I, I don't see what the actual problem is. It seems like it fit. It was a valuable lesson imparted on Peter by someone who's been around in the series. I, it checks out for me. But it wasn't Uncle Ben, so fuck it. I just consider it like super multi-layered, because it's doing the regular lesson of like your uh your action can lead to like you know, deaths, including her own, but also that your inaction is not acceptable just because you can you have concern that it could cause damage. Like it I mean, I feel like the whole trilogy makes some really great points about the complexity of responsibility. And uh, capping it off like that, and then she dies telling him that he didn't make a mistake with this is the... I don't know, I find that really meaningful. The Spider-Man villains had their chance. Oh no. <laughs> Superman's gonna laser them all. Uh, hello there, Doggo2, Electric Ragaloo. Hello, hello. Mulberry, and any guests? Oh, they're saying hi to everybody. Hello. hello. Mulberry. I'm only up to episode 110, so I'll just ask this and run away. What is your favorite word? Mine is Sassafras, with Rigamarole as a runner-up. Sassafras and Rigamarole. Those are nice words. Partic good words I really man. like Rigamarole. I like that a lot. I don't know about favorite words. I feel like this is a question we've been asked, but it's one of those questions that I just can't give a consistent answer to. Um, uh, hmm. I like blue. I like the word blue a lot. I like blue. Um, Boom, blue. Uh, verdant. I like that. I like cipher. Cipher's neat. Cipher's neat. Uh... Gasoline. I like the word gasoline. Uh, cause it, in my head, it conjures up the, cause I have I have a, I like this, not like like huffing it or anything, but oh, whenever oh, cool. you go to a gas station or whenever you're in like a garage or something like that, you could smell the grease and some gasoline. And it has that industrial aroma to it that's kind of in the air. I like that. It brings back some good memories in childhood. And so the term gasoline and grease, I I have positive associations with uh, with memories and youth, and and I really like those words as a result. Yeah. Um. Any 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 for you guys? Fringy metal. No, I, I've word. never thought about a favorite word to be honest. <laughs> I like the word cook. You already said like seven words. Well, he's I making enough for you guys favor. not having any. Yeah, it's still someone's many, gotta though. fill this dead air. Mm-hmm. It's a radio show. We can't. We can't have dead air. Radio. Damn. 
Opera Dial. Radio show. Radio show. Well. Welcome I, to EFAP FM. I suppose that is a, a good amount of words. Um. I don't understand, and I don't know what nuance means. Oh. Nuance. I have you know, buddy, my head cannon for Venom is New Venom Killed Spider-Man 3 Before They Meet. What do you think about Bioshock? Oh. <laughs> I love Bioshock a lot. It's one of my favorite games. Yes. And then Bioshock 2 is, is sits there and you're like, I like you, buddy. You're cool. You're all right. And, and then Infinite walks in the room. And you're like, excuse me. What the fuck are you doing? I'm your long lost you. cousin. It's me, Bioshock Infinite. You're lying. <laughs> You're not related we to me at all. <laughs> You're just that relative who all of a sudden makes themselves known after I've won the lottery. Hmm. You're not. You're not a part of this family. Be You're gone. Not real. Infinite. Oh yeah. I, know, I was looking in the chat. Someone said, "Bollard rags." Who do you think built the pyramids? I'm saying people did it. No alien help. <laughs> what a strange question. Alien do help. Alien help with everything. Aliens built the pyramids and the, the, and the spaceships. Aliens gave us the wheel. Aliens gave us rock. Aliens give rock. It was kind. Also, I will be right back. I'm gonna use the loot real quick. Okay. Uh. Um, don't remember Winter Soldier. What's the scoop? Why bad? Hmm. A quick way. Hyper plot armor. Out of character interactions. Lots of crazy contrivances that make no sense. And a bazillion holes. Uh, Black Widow is the only one that I think we conclude is, is all righty in that movie. That's the quick vision. If you want the long vision, there's like a seven hour podcast on it. But have fun. First time Super Chatter here. Would you consider this the best MCU film for character slash writing moments? Love the stream and keep it up. Hi, Rags. Uh, I mean, it's pretty good, but I don't think it would be the best. Probably not even the best by a couple examples. I'm not even sure I put it above Guardians for, like, really good character moments, you know? I have to think about it. But I'm certainly impressed that they managed to give such potent payoffs to characters that weren't even in the franchise. But I suppose they are now. Why didn't Strange make everyone forget Mysterio? It was solve Peter's identity crisis without affecting his loved ones. Well, see, I don't think the spell works no matter what. Um, but I agree that that probably should have been discussed. A lot of things should have been discussed. In fact, it's just not a very good... It's just not very well written, that... that, that a way of getting us to uh, the next part of the story, you know? Yeah. Kind of reminds me of time travel. Like, whatever, go with it. Okay. Um, I just finished Sean Chi and the Ten Rings, a Marvel movie. Phase four is like watching your boy get married, have kids, find his wife cheating on him, and not getting a divorce because, hey, she's happy. Oh. Mm. Well,. Yeah, uh, Shang-Chi was kind of, kind of lame. Um, I hope the next one's great. Eh. Mm. Eh. Came in seven hours late, but I'm eager to watch the episode in full. Hello, Mola. Hi, Rags. G'day, Fringy. And Merry Christmas, all. Merry uh, Christmas. Hello. Which, um, catches us up on Spider-Man. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Which means I guess I will jump to today's. Oh. Uh, quick question. Have you seen Agent Carter? Was before Trump, so it wasn't really woke. <laughs> and God bless ER is back. Okay. Uh, I did actually. No. I watched the first season and I thought it was fine. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. I think this is the two seasons. I can't remember. I think so. Rinka, read a comment on his stream by an accident called Waddle <laughs> D's Nuts. He read it totally straight, which made it funnier. <laughs> I think I remember that actually. Waddle D's Nuts. <laughs> Waddle D's <God>. Nuts. <laughs> 
Uh, buy Shiva Inu rags. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Answering a oh, question. Do, do they mean? Yeah, unless they're commanding you to buy one, I don't know. I I have no. I do not have one to give to you. Answering a question from last week, according to Archie Comics, Sonic's real name is Olgavai Maurice Hedgehog. Is that true? Olgavi? Olgavai? No. I have no idea. What a name. No wonder he goes by Sonic. Uh, you guys found out God is real. You get one question. You can't ask what happens after death. What do you ask? I guess we'd know what happens at that point if if we know he's real because it's all it's all about them. assuming the so Bible just becomes one, true. If we get we get to ask him one question. Mm -hmm. Um. Do they have Snickers on Mars? Oh, that's tough. Um. I mean, my know, brain immediately goes no? to a okay. bit of edgy <laughs> atheism. I'd be like, why do you make people with the potential to suffer for eternity? Yeah, it'd be something like that. I'd I'd have to. I'd have to, because he, he has so much to answer for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, this is like when Stephen Fry answers this question. Very passionate and, well, reasonable fucking series of uh, outrageous, well, outrage. At least one guy in chat reacted to my joke. Thank you. Appreciate that. Who are you? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> you barge into this call like this. Rude. I didn't even knock. Uh, yeah, it, it 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 would be some question along why would why would you let this happen? Why would you design the world with this in mind? Why would you create a place of infinite torment? Why? You, you almost want like, some... to him a bit better in the question, just in case he gets an answer like because it's the right thing to do or something like that. You'd be like, yeah, ah, well, that's fine. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why would you why would you create creatures who are unable to like understand you? Or why something along those lines? I don't know. I'd have to really think about it. Yeah, it's a difficult one. Yeah, especially if you're gonna get one question. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend is always trying to give me a cream pie, but the pie is too big. I can't finish it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about pies earlier. That's yep. I love a good cream pie. Yeah, sure. Disney's Luck of the Irish was a smexual awakening for me. Shrinking Irish moms. I've checked. I'm the only one into that in the entire world. Shrinking Irish mums. <laughs> Shrinking Irish mom. All right. I once had a teacher specific. who said we should give gifts uh, to others on our birthday since they put up with us all year. Since today is mine. Here's a thank you for all of you wonderful, all the wonderful hours of entertainment and here's to many more. Oh, well, thank you very much. What a, what a nice uh, idea. Um, wow, EFAP's stealing one of the main characters from Jailer the White Longman. Very confused. I do not know of this reference. Hello. The FF super chats I mentioned that were missed by Rags when he was AFK weren't related to Seven, but to the history of FF's misnumbering. Mm-hmm. Oh. They can be confusing, yeah, in terms of why... Because, like, four for us is a different number for the Japanese and things things like that, you know, it's... It's odd. Oh, yeah, it was, um... Reading it all in a row, it's just like, this is fucking insane. Uh, why'd the chicken go across the basketball court? Uh, why? He heard the referee was blowing fouls. Nice. 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 What's the most impressive thing you've done in a game? Mine is being top 20 in the world at Ori and the Will of the Wisps Avalanche Escape Time Trial. Most impressive thing I've done in a game? Gosh, it's tough to say. Um, I have all, I got all the achievements for Dead Space 1 and 2. Um, mm. I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty decently, I'm, I'm quite good across a variety of games, but as far as single achievement that I've, like, done that I'm most proud of, I'm legitimately not, oh, gosh, I don't know. Ooh. I legit don't know. Rarest achievements I got 
One of them was um, Mortal Kombat versus DC. I got the uh, win 25 rank games in a row, which mm. is the the ratio on like people who've actually got that was insanely high to the point where it was worth a lot of true achievement score. And I was just like, wow, apparently that's really difficult. I don't remember being that good at the game, but maybe I was. Uh, what else is there? I would probably go with my recent item uh, beating bosses with items on Elden Ring. That was pretty, pretty cool. Beat World of War on Veteran. Uh, I don't know, I got all the gems in Crash 4, but I don't know if that's impressive, more so just endurance. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what I would say. I completed Dark Soul. I completed them all. Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3? Yeah. Whoa. And Demonic Souls too. Whoa. And Shme Shmek Hero. Wow. And the Elderly Rings. Wow. Oh my goodness uh. gracious. You haven't beaten Elden Rings DLC yet though. True. Uh, that is true. I'm, I'm working on that. I got uh, exclusive access. <laughs> Man, I, I, I'd, I'd go with my with my item only run or beating bosses only with items that I just did. That was pretty tough. Um. Oh. Uh, replayed RE7 and RE8 back-to-back. -back. I don't know, guys. I like 7 a lot more. RE8 feels shallower in comparison. High rags, stretches behind the ears. Oh, thank you very much. And they clarified a little bit more, not a lot more. Um, from memory, 8 just kind of was 7, but with more stuff. I don't remember, like, 7 being that much better at all. Seven. I think I liked 8 more than 7. Because I I think eight was seven was like half complete. Yeah, seven feels half complete. Seven feels like once you're done with the first like you get past the first four hours or so, five hours maybe depending on your pacing. It's just I don't know. It feels all floopy and different and I don't know. Um, thumbnail of the day for Oni is Smash Bros. Complete. It is. Ernie. Oh, are you ready? <laughs> uh, Rags, not sure if it's been asked yet, but if Elon changes Twitter enough for the better, will you be making a return? Uh, I might. There, there's a part of me that sort of is like, hey, it'd be fun to go on Twitter and shit post, and it's good for networking. So I might. I don't know. I might. What is the best shower thought you've ever had? Um, I had many showers in my lifetime, so I don't know. <laughs> Say what? I I had many showers in my lifetime, so I don't I don't remember them all. Hmm. <laughs> Probably the best shower thought I've ever had is it's time to get out of the shower. <laughs> I don't remember the the profound things that may be thought of in a shower, really. I just... Don't write them down. But boy, no. I've won so many arguments in that shower. I don't <laughs> believe it. Oh, nice. But I'm amused by the, the Shower Thoughts subreddit, so that counts. For a better answer to that question, go to the Shower Thoughts subreddit. <laughs> they have plenty of answers. Have any of you seen Possessor? Is it just me, or is the will building in that film terrible? I don't think I've ever heard about that movie. I'm sorry, can you see what movie? Sorry? Possessor. I've never seen it. Never heard of it. So, um, I think the answer is no, but sorry to hear it's poopy. Um, are you going to do a Thor reaction? If by that do you mean the trailer, then no. If you mean the movie, then we'll do coverage, but not. Like a reaction. I guess you still call it a reaction. 
Moodle, be proud of your sibling, Tommy K. Twitch. Huh? No idea. Tommy K. Twitch. Tommy K. Twitch. I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, Sorry, okay? I'm sure they appreciate the apology. Um, found a way to bring Chud back. React with him and maybe Adam and Sitch to the death of Stalin. It's an underrated political comedy. Uh, Drinker actually recommended that to me as well. I haven't, I don't think I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. And it's a hot, Hearts of Iron Force streamer. I still don't get it though. I've never played that game in my life. Hmm. There must be more. I need to go deeper. Uh, Fringy, tell M to stream L.A. Noir. I don't know if they mean me. Um, the game is like pretty long. It's like 28, 30 hours. Uh, I'm not sure if it's conducive to a. Uh... Have you ever, you have you played it right or? Yeah, I played it for a while. Right, and that's the thing. If like, I'm. I'm... Hmm. I wonder like how much value you get out of watching somebody play it if they've already played it before and you might have some awareness of the right or wrong answers. I'll or probably right or wrong question. It would, it would probably always be a a better choice, quote unquote, as in like something I haven't played or something that's more Oh well. Yeah, exactly. In I fact I would rather long. stream uh, GTA five before that, to be honest. GTA five is more conducive to streaming. Because I ain't never played it. And I hear it's one of those wow, games okay. people like. Single player I liked. Um, so, yeah, you'd probably get a decent kick out of it. Mm. Hey, everyone. I love you all. Any chance we can get all the EFAPs on Spotify? Owen Hyrax. Hello. Uh, maybe one day. That would be one of my thoughts in the back of my head that I need to sort out at some point. Maybe things. So, no promises. And I know it's like, how the fuck could you be this late in with EFAP's like existence getting on Spotify? And I'd be like, look, this is only the beginning, okay? Only yeah. the beginning. We do not intend on stopping anytime soon. We're not even that old yet. That's true. We're not even that old. Like, I'm I haven't even hit fifty. We're young? Yeah. I'm far from fifty. I'm like right now. I'm like forty nine and a half. Right there. Nice. Nice. Uh, who's the worst human being, Hassan or Quantum TV? Probably... <laughs> Hassan has definitely more influence in what he says. Uh, probably Hassan. But they're both bad people. Oh my god, that green shell, holy shit. Uh, but yeah, it, it's... I can see why it's tough to choose between them, I, I, I understand, but... No, well, Hassan is hard to beat, I'm just saying. Uh... Hell, guys, would you do an MCU tier list next MMM? Oh, Multimedia Medley? Oh, uh, we could... We, oh, that seems like something we could knock out in, like, a half hour if we're trying to go quickly, right? Yeah, I think so. And it would just be... You know, all of chat would go nuts, but they would be able to... Better on it. We could do the, the MCU game where you, you pick one better than the other thing until you get the full listing. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. Ah, I remember that. I want to see Ben Shapiro play that. Let's see what he says. <laughs> Would you say Dash's arc slash development is from the first Incredibles trying to win an argument that he was better in the f Okay, this is up to... What would you say Dash's arc and development is from the first Incredibles? Okay, we'll start there. Um, What is Dash's development in Incredibles? Well, at the beginning... Mm -hmm. He really, really, I think that it's the sports aspect. He wants to, he really, really wants to compete in sports. And in the end, when he gets to compete, he knows to obey, like, you know, he listens Convention. to his parents. Hmm? He has to, because he, he, he forces himself to come second, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, because he's, not he's not listening. Because his parents, it's about being more responsible with his powers. I think that's oh, yeah, like, but, if you wanted it, to yeah. highlight their core. Would be yeah, that he's uh, yeah, first. He just wants yeah. to. Well, you said obey his parents. I don't think it has. Well, then to I do stopped because Mahler had said something. I said convention. He's uh, adhering to more of the conventional limits of what people can do, instead of using his power to 
beat everyone Well, it's else. not just about flexing or like, you know, look at me, I'm the best and look at all the crazy things that I can do. Because like in the film, it's about him using his powers to like, you know, save people and, and do good things, not just for the sake of using them because there's something he has access to. That'd probably be his arc. I think so, yes. Um, so the next thing is trying to win an argument that he was better in the first one, which I thought was obvious. I have my own idea, but wanted to hear from you guys. I can't even remember what they do with him in the second one. I can't even remember I what feel much like either. Really about. I know it was that Bob had to stay at home, and he wasn't very confident of that. And Helen was going on an adventure against the screen slaver. I just remember it being bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good movie. I remember being disappointed. Though interestingly, I don't remember being disappointed with Monsters University, which I was totally expecting to be. That was fine. Yeah. Uh, sure, Halo Infinite update is next week, but Deep Rock's update is tomorrow. I know what I'll be playing for the next month. Got no faith in 343. Oh, very neat. Yeah, I'll uh, rustle up some people maybe after the CFAP and we'll... Uh... Oh, wait, tomorrow. Right, that's the day after today. I think so. So yeah, later I'll uh, later I'll tomorrow I guess I'll rustle hmm. up some people and we'll play Deep Rock Galactic. Check out all the stuff they add. Froggy thoughts on Crash Twin Sanity and why it's the best? It's not the best, but I do like it. Um, but that game wasn't finished, unfortunately. It clearly, like needed more time in development. I like it though. Hmm. Uh, Sidney Prescott is a great character. Who that? I don't know. I feel like it sounds familiar, but I... I is that... A at the moment. Is the main character in Scream? Because I know Sidney, but I can't remember if her surname was Prescott. Who in chat will know? Chat, give me the answers. What's happening? It is Scream. Okay, cool. Um, if Ozzy was real, why Elon Musk didn't buy it? <laughs> Explain. If Ozzy was if if Ozzy was real, why didn't he buy it? Oh, I swear, I think your answer is in the the question is that it's not real, right? Or alternatively, that he couldn't afford to buy a sovereign nation. Oh well, yeah, okay. he couldn't those, afford a nation. All right. <laughs> yeah. Likely That's story. Greeting, massives, and high rags. Hello. Did you know that the Mario movie has been delayed to 2023? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Also, any chance EFAP will cover the Mario movie? Yeah, we'll probably do a, the probably. Bob Hoskins one back to back with the Chris Pratt one. Um, oh boy. When it comes out. Why not? Uh, fuck Mary Kill. Fringy going a whole EFAP without bringing up Simpsons. Rags going a whole EFAP without bringing up Hitler. Jay going a whole EFAP without bringing up anything sexual. Well, I'll marry the Simpsons one. Because I like Simpsons. <laughs> I'll kill. Hmm. Hitler or sex. I guess I'll kill Hitler like and sex, sex. Yeah, yeah. They seem to be good at that. Hitler's good at killing sex. and sex is good at, you know, <laughs> being sex, I guess. <laughs> oh. So, Moon Knight, episode 5, is IMO the single best piece of anything Marvel has produced since Infinity War? And yet the show still going into the finale doesn't make a lick of sense. Oh well, no, because No Way Home uh, is easily better. Well, we haven't seen episode five yet, and I've heard Mary, oh, many good okay. things oh, about okay. it, but I mean, I have a feeling that we may be in for the same shit as the other episode, where it's just going to be like, whoa, look at this event. And it'll be like, yes, but what builds that event? What is that have event? You guys been, have you guys been watching Moon Knight then? Oh yeah. Oh boy. Um, yeah. Would not recommend. Not recommend. I, I thought so. I, I think you would have told me if there was anything good Marvel related I should have watched. Yeah, you should just watch Halo instead. Just assume it's terrible. No. Oh no. <laughs> just assume everything we watch is terrible unless we say otherwise. <laughs> Until we say otherwise. <laughs> That's what I do mostly, unless I want to watch something for Metal's Forge. So I'm like, I'm just gonna keep away from that. It's fine. Yeah, because like, I'm pretty sure once I watched Arcane, I was just like, everyone, everyone, yep. listen, everyone. <laughs> well, with Fringy as well. We got a code 93, a good thing. <laughs> a good thing. <laughs> we got a good thing, You're everyone. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> no, seriously. 
<laughs> Liar. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be interested in Shanghai. I'm so funny, but I'm fine. I'm Shanghai. Because they yeah, said thoughts, we haven't seen it yet, so we'll we'll let you yeah. know. Got confused with another one uh, again. And then, hey, Rag, stay strong, stay long. Sorry. I will stay long and strong. Absolutely. No other way to be. Um, Mola, say this in American accent. I'm testing something. Oh, well, the, uh, you've knocked out the T in anti. You want me to, I guess they want me to say Annie. So, fool it with the anti Semitic remarks. Maybe they're trying to see if I would say Annie or. No, I'm pretty sure Americans only say it the one. Anti? Well, if you remove the T, but I don't know what, why they did. They seem to have done that on purpose, because like, they want to see how A -N -E? to pronounce it. A-N-E? I think if I saw that, I'd pronounce it Ain. No, A-N-I, isn't it? A-N-I? You know oh, how to spell anti, uh, not anti-up. Oh, I would... Anti-Semitic. Oh, okay. All right, all right. All right, now that <laughs> I know that it's that anti. Um, um, A-N-I? Annie? Yeah, I would say Annie. Mm, that's Anna, I then, like okay. a... Don't forget. Yeah. I activate my chain chomp and I get hit by a Bowser shell. Bring you, this is unfair. That's, yeah, that, that is not fair. Dude, Jeez. that's one of those, like, Mario World things that needs to have a chain chomp run head first into a Bowser shell. It's like, what happens? Which one gets crushed? <laughs> an immovable and unstoppable <laughs> force makes an immovable object. The game just that ends. Lines. Yeah. We cannot the universe know. and That's the universe question. What about it Super game. Sonic versus Mario Star? Um, oh, I don't know. Mario, Ma I don't know why I said Mario. Mario Star is invincible, so I don't know if like. Isn't that what Super Sonic yeah. is, or? or... It's well, just, it says it's oh, invincible. Mean... Maybe Wait, Mario oh, yeah, with the right. star. Super Sonic is like super duper. Yeah. Good God, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Um. Who was that random old guy in Drinker's Stream, lol? That was... Call Me Chappie, I think was his YouTube name? It was Santa. I, um... I hadn't, I hadn't met him. I didn't even know he was coming on the stream. It was a surprise to me, too. And I was just like, alright. We, uh, we had a chat with him. It was fun. The fuck are you? <laughs> he also happens to be a guy who several of you in the audience wanted us to cover his, uh, Arcane opinions. Because he said Arcane was very he... boring. Oh, no. Oh, but, um... He's boring. <laughs> his, <laughs> Got him. I, I, I checked out his video. It's pretty. It's it's fine. Like it's just meh. I think he says that he thinks the world building's terrible. Um, but uh, he seems terrible. okay with the cat. Oh. You know, it's 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 a, it's a more standard. Like it's not quite the same as as Schnee, where he's like Heimerdinger Schnee? is a fraud. It's just like how you what, what is happening? It's like he doesn't <laughs> even be invincible, immortal forever. I told Theo about that. He was like, "What do you mean?" I was like, he, "He said that you don't see him be immortal because you don't see all of time." And, and Theo was like, "There's no way someone said that." And I was like, "I don't know what I want him to do." Mama, explain now. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. Hi, Rags. Hello. Good video about Quantum TV. That guy is a clown uh -huh. and deserves everything that's coming to him. Scritches for the good boy. Yeah. Thank that you. Was a good video. I think I watched you just it. might. He's uh, a crazy, crazy, crazy guy. Hmm. Uh, Dune shields have to block explosions, both shrapnel and shockwaves. A shockwave is just fast-moving air, which is blocked like any other particle. I thought that um, is it? air wasn't fully blocked because they need to breathe. Yeah. Yeah, plus, like, it's it's one thing to stop a solid object, right? But to stop millions and millions of tiny particles of air? Like, that seems like it's on a whole nother level. Because, like, um, the shield was active for the uh, the Duke, right? And, and he still got poisoned, at least partially. When, yep. when, when, yeah. Uh, the Dune book skips almost all fight scenes, I don't think... Everything Frank Herbert wrote makes complete sense, so it's similar to Star Wars physics. Very well. Um, thoughts on SK Comics' video on Homecoming? He seems to make some pretty solid points about the movie being bad, though I could just be stupid. 
Um, I can't remember um, how much I agreed with. Yeah, um, we certainly weren't impressed with it. Um, I was more so focused on just... I just think he's a bit harsh to, to Peter being able to make mistakes. Um, and to be fair, I think most people are. Uh, I know people get frustrated with the idea of like, oh, it's a kid, so he just gets to make whatever decision he wants. And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, you just have to contextualize it within... Would this be a mistake this kid would make with the assumptions he has at the time? Like, um... One of the things that fucks Peter over a lot is just trusting other people to make things... Like, that they're making the right decisions, or that the AI he's got can be uh, utilized in such a way that, that is relatively simple and they would understand exactly what he means when he says stuff. He's not like... He comes across to me as just someone who hasn't had enough experience to be able to... Yeah, he's a young kid. He doesn't have a lot of life experience. Because, like, if we were told to give a, a robot an instruction, I'm sure all of us here would be like, well, wait, how does the robot interpret what I mean when I say certain words? It's not just going to be what I think um, those words mean, right? Like, and, and that's not something I would expect many young teenagers to think. I would expect them to be like, yeah, a washing machine, wash clothes. Be like, yeah, why wouldn't that work? And it's just like, I don't know, we just got to be careful. What, what kind of AI are we dealing with? That sort of thing. And, um... That's just like one example, but yeah, Peter, especially in um, Homecoming, he's is he 14 or 15? Uh, I think he's 15. I think he's 15. Very mm -hmm. young, and everybody was super retarded when they were 15, okay? Except Rags. Yes. Except me, I was very, very well learned and wise when I was 15. I'm still I was like Jesus wow, you in went the temple, with, man. Uh, you went with wise instead of sagacious, I can't believe it. Yeah, I didn't want to overuse it. The gay wise. I thought that would be a yeah. The wise just. I think so. I want to seem approachable. Mm-hmm. To all of those who haven't ascended to my level. <clears throat> Naturally. Yeah, not everyone can be quite as humble as me. <laughs> I'm extraordinarily humble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna miss Drax. Whatever ends up happening in terms of the new guardians. Uh, Rewatch the Batman. Who the fuck pulls a piece of duct tape that long? It is unrealistic that it wouldn't twist and stick to itself. Uh... I imagine that they had to shoot that shot many times to get it right. <laughs> I'm trying what? to think of like, yeah, I guess, well, because he wraps his head around in, in that, right? So. Oh, I think it's talking about the opening scene um, when he pulls the big strip of duct tape and it's like, man, yeah, that is a long strip and yeah, so it is kind of the case with like all tape, right? The longer you pull it out, the more likely it is that it's going to get all tangled and stuck together. I, yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. I, I would. It, what does he do with that first? Maybe, maybe right. he puts I, it I on his face. I thought he just puts wraps it around the guy's head, right? I think that's what he does. But I think they're just saying that he it was a long strip. Right? Yeah, it yeah, just, it was. You know, it was. It's, it's uh, and you got to get practiced at making sure that that extends. But, True. I can imagine he practiced drive a great deal in his apartment. You just yeah. Drive straight, you fool. Um, also, how does Batman get anywhere walking like Jason? He does some running. He can run. He does do some running. Does some gliding. Glider. Rolling, maybe. Does he have a roll? I don't remember. He does a roll. I, oh, I, I think he does a roll. Cape. He, no, he does a roll when he blows up the uh, the roof. He lands and he does like a cool little combat roll. Uh, if you want super edgy, look up 40k Raven Guard. That sound familiar to you, Ranks? Raven Guard? No, I'm not a I'm not really a 40k guy. I'm not the one to really ask about it. Have a look here. Oh, that looks kind of neat. Well, I guess they're really adhering to the whole raven thing. Or trying to. Feeling. Wings and the claws. Raven Guard Dark Fury Assault Squad. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> click on this. Raven Guard Dark Fury Assault Squad. That sounds great. <laughs> raven Guard Dark Fury Assault Squad. The name is almost as edgy as the way they look. <laughs> their wings and their claws. Well, hey. I'm sure they get the job done. Just like Shadow would. 
Everyone go watch YMS's new Lion King 2019 review. The things you can hear Favreau say are truly saddening with the way he devalues the 1994 film and the animation industry as a whole. Agreed. Well, I think the more depressing part of that video is just like the, it's, it's the clip that gets repeated, but it's emblematic. Dude, Pride Rock, it's like, god damn. Let's yeah. Pride Rock. <laughs> and of course, the fact that they're saying it's it's a live action film, it's no. literally 3D animated film. I was it's losing my mind animated. when they were saying that. I was like, are the, you, what, what are you doing? Are you? I'm sure what? that in the past, I bunched the Lion King in with these like live action remakes, but it's not a live action film. It's computer animated. It's it is as computer animated as Toy Story. Like it's 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 computer animated yeah. film. But to say it's like, well, it's live action because it looks real. It's, it's like why I said a painting that's going for photorealism doesn't become a photo because of that. And True. of course, like, what if in a hundred years the technology reaches the point where like it looks archaic and shit? Does it then stop becoming a live-action film? It's just a weird way to categorize it. And mm -hmm. that video is like, because I haven't seen the remake. Um, I've seen like clips and parts and comparisons between the way that lines were delivered in the original versus the new one, and be prepared being absolutely uh... butchered. Um, which that one really hurts because "Be Prepared" might be my favorite song in The Lion King. Mm -hmm. I love um, "Be Prepared," I, but I mean that, that video is that video is excellent. I mean, some of the things that like YMS is talking about in terms of you know the fact that there was apparently audio clipping, like audio clipping in a two hundred million dollar feature Insane. film from Disney. Madness. Um, exactly, the mixing being really absurd. Um, like the the. the and, and, and then it's well, even it's traces like, like motivations behind it can find errors or removals and then com cross compare with like interviews and stuff and he just he just ends yeah. up making so many great points and, yeah and um really hammers home at the end like when he's doing the comparison of um you know mufasa's death in the original versus the remake and how every choice in the original is so deliberate in um conveying like because i mean it's a fantastic scene it's so deliberate and then the new one they to make a bunch of choices that like when you combine them all together you just have a much worse scene and it's you know this is i don't see how anybody could argue against it if the lion king didn't exist the original what would people find valuable about the new lion king really like would people really care about it that much as Dude, a story be such an awesome test to go into an alternate universe where the original never existed and release this see what happens mm -hmm. yeah because i think every because it's like you said you know when um when Zazu like does his bow, the only reason you would interpret that as a bow in the live action is because you know that he bowed in the animation. It's like a film that kind of can't stand on its own. And also like you see in the interviews, oh yeah, no, it's for younger audiences. It's like, yes, because you know what? The Lion King, it's not like you can watch that now and enjoy it just as much as when it came out. That's not possible. You don't need to remake old animated movie. It's not even that old. It's like 25 years old. It's not that old. It's great. It's 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 a fantastic movie, and just they're never gonna stop. The Lion King is like I'm pretty sure it is the highest grossing animated film of all time. Like it's beaten so, out every. Yeah. I think it's beaten out every Pixar and Disney animation. Like what you know, Disney Animation Studios like film. It it made so much money. Mm hmm. And like they're all gonna make a lot of money. Mm hmm. <laughs> And it's not going to stop, and they're going to make sequels, because aren't they making, like, a prequel about Mufasa? It's going to oh, be, like, off. the 3D animated. I'm pretty sure that's happening. The they Stone. They made Krill 2. Yes. They made multiple Maleficent movies. They got Little Mermaid coming out, like, next year. Uh -huh. it's fucking Snow White. It's never gonna... Oh, and Peter Pan as well. They're doing it. And Pinocchio. <laughs> so I love this many. point about when uh, Zazu arrives in the... Stampede scene, the music reflects like it's it's a progression, but it's it's not savior, like in the no. original, because it's just a matter of someone is now aware of this happening that wasn't before. But in the new one, Zazu's arrival is treated like it's heroic and saving the day, which makes no sense at all. Mm -hmm. he can't oh, do and shit. also, yeah, I love how it was just highlighted as like, ah, yes, a Brit Zazu British person. Yes, that is Zazu. You know what? Like that's all Zazu is. He is a he is a British like bird, just totally missing that Rowan Atkinson was playing a role 
He wants to just it? being himself. He's got this huge history with comedic timing and acting and all kinds of character work compared to John Oliver who, like, no offense, doesn't really play anything but one character and has mostly now just done shows, like late night shows talk type shows. things. Yeah. yeah, talk shows. He's not an actor, really. Um, like, Rowan Atkinson is, is an actor. And also, like, yeah. the character of Zazu makes a hell of a lot more sense in the original because Zazu is not- Zazu is funny. But it's not like funny owing to incompetence. He's quite competent. It's just that he's very focused on like his job and he's kind of uptight sometimes and he's not in much of a position to defend himself. He isn't just a goofy idiot. Yeah. Which on all of it is. Um and I I love the the choice of clip he had for for Black Adder. Mm -hmm. uh, so to you, Baldrick, the Renaissance was a thing that happened to other people, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. Just, um, man, the, the fact that they had actually done concepts for that film where the the, anim the characters looked more uh, cartoony. And it's like, I love those what? looks. They look great. Well, so, so the thing is, I still don't want the movie to exist because even with that look, it would still have a bunch of other choices that I hate. But, like, at the very least, it wouldn't just be me watching, like, photorealistic lions with no yeah. emotion. The characters That's can like have what said. we call expressions. Lions actually do have emotions, you know, because lions are alive. Um, <laughs> they're alive and they're, you know, reasonably intelligent and social. And you can see a lot of, uh, you know, emotions on their faces, but they're just absent in the film. What's a cool byproduct yeah, of his yeah, video is not just that everyone's now going to be able to shit better on the new version, but also, like, help realize what is loved about the original. Yeah, that's, cause yeah, that's, yeah. that's the big thing with the comparison, is just how deliberate a lot of the choices were. And you know what's really funny about all that is, I'm pretty sure, maybe someone can correct me because I might be wrong, I think The Lion King was not... I think the priority at the studio at the time was Pocahontas. The Lion King wasn't, like, it wasn't guaranteed to be the big hit um that wasn't guaranteed to be the big success and it was kind of made on a more of a condensed timeline i think because uh, i know the story that uh jeremy irons uh heard his vocal cords while uh doing be, be prepared but they didn't have enough time in the production pipeline to let him recover and resing it so jim cummings uh sung the rest of it and it's like Dude, The Lion King, the original, was made on a timeline that wasn't as favorable as this film. And look at what they did. Look at what they achieved. You have no they excuse. Had incredible you have more money. incredible creative vision, and talent, yeah. and passion, passion to tell this story. Passion, yeah. Wait a god. Passion's like the core aspect. But like, and I love that thing of like, oh, you know, when you're shooting real photography, you're not always going to have beautiful, sh uh, you know, skies. It's like, yeah, so what? one of the really <laughs> awesome aspects of animation is that you get to control everything, uh, for all of these things. It's it's really cool. I just watched a clip from, uh, I just saw it was recommended on YouTube, The Bad Guys. It's like the, the Pixar, uh, not Pixar, yeah, sorry, yeah. DreamWorks. And I was watching it in the opening scene. It's like, oh, this looks gorgeous, this, this film. And um, something that's really cool about it is like the way that it's because I think it's set in LA, and it's got like a the, the way that like that city is rendered in the backgrounds and the lighting. It looks great, and it's like yeah, that's one of the awesome things about animation is you have total control over the image. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't leverage it under the pretense of well, in real photography you wouldn't have beautiful skies, especially when like are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, like really? You've been outside. Which is, Dude, there's you know, all kinds of shit like that throughout all the interviews. It's just some wild fucking dumb things like, oh, Rogue One, it, as they said, James Earl Jones absolutely still got the same pipes. It was like, what? No, everyone famously thought that Darth Vader's voice sounded old as fuck in Rogue One. What do you mean? What? Well, and the fact that they, uh, they reuse lines from the original. Which just proves you know? that they're full of shit, yeah. Why yeah, are you lying, much. John? <laughs> Oh man, and just like, all of the, like, oh man, just the, the scene, the introduction with Scott, such such a great scene in the original, and in the remake. Oh, you know, it's painful like... to compare Chiwetel to, to Jeremy Irons, because every time you hear a Jeremy Irons line, it's like, filled mm -hmm. with layers of the delivery. Yeah, and also just Scar and 
Scar in the original is better, it makes a lot more sense in terms of the plot and what he achieves. Because this, well, like... this Scar is clearly, like, not well, you know, like, this Scar is clearly, like, he can't be really be trusted, whereas, like, Scar has a level of, like, ah, yes, you know, I'm just, I'm cheeky, you know? Yeah, I'm just like, a mischievous, I fun uncle. Uh, don't worry about me. And then he's yeah. like, actually, no. And, yeah, when he was playing the clips back and forth, and Mufasa, between the two main lines, refers to him as brother when he's hanging from the the cliff it's like mm -hmm. and when he shows the new one it's not in there i was like dude that's like super important why would that's mufasa so say important. that what make what makes you realize something that's happening to him right now in terms of his thoughts like it's i just agree with yms just like they don't understand why these words were there what these words mean yeah, like, stars brother that's really important well and like if there were any possibility that mufasa would think he wouldn't help him that should be expunged by him being like brother like this is this is super serious yeah. i need your fucking help exactly. yeah and then he, he doesn't oh and also just the line delivery for long live the king in both ones oh. it's like per one perfect it's perfect it's like i don't because, know how you could deliver that line yeah. any better it's just jeremy it's irons so is replaceable weird. but not i guess that well, one, the... i guess everyone's replaceable except well, for it was it was james l jones was the only one who didn't get brought back um, you mean the only one? Uh, that sorry, James O. John was the only one who did get brought back. Everybody else wasn't. Well, what do you what uh, highlight? Like they replaced the gay actor, the one they had with another gay actor. And it's just like, why not just why why are you doing this? And the funny part as well that Jeremy Isaacs' voice is more than ready to be Scar, but James Earl Jones Absolutely. is not ready to be Mufasa James again. Jones, yeah, yeah, James Earl Jones needs. He's, yeah, let, let his him voice is sit down and be. enjoy well, the newspaper, or whatever. Don't be forcing him to do this. I guess I guess the thing is, is it's just kind of like his performance in the original is fantastic. Oh yeah, it's powerful. Um, he, and and it's not a matter of like a loss of skill. It's just that the voice isn't quite there anymore. And also the material itself is like, even they copy a lot of the lines, they leave out parts that were really important. And it's like, yeah, you just compare it and it's like, damn, this is just sad. <laughs> this thing, there's no shame. He's, he's, he's an old man. He's done great work in his life. He's done so much great work, yeah. Just let him, you don't... Forcing him to, because like you listen to Vader in the, uh, in Empire, well, New Hope, Empire, and uh, Return of the Jedi, it is a powerful fucking voice. No wonder he was hired all the time. It's a it's gorgeous voice. Um, perfect for for villainous characters, but also like paragons. Um, and you have, you have dragging him back to do these voices when he's just. So, because you see those clips, I believe he is trying, but like, there's only so much he's capable yeah. of right now. Simba, come to me. Uh. Simba. <laughs> Simba. <laughs> yes. Uh. It's not there, but yeah, we can't bring Jeremy Irons back or anyone else like that. Nope. Some of the most iconic voice acting ever, and you don't like. Uh... Maybe it's better that they didn't, so I don't associate the new Scar with the old one. I think if they brought him back, he would have been the best part of the movie, probably. And I, I think, probably. I can't remember who I was talking to about this, but I said, like, uh, part in reason, just because of how good he is as a voice actor, but also because he's familiar with the lines, he'll know how they're supposed to be delivered. He'll even probably, while voice actor, be like, wait, why is this line this way? But I don't know how much you'd bad. actually... Jeremy, we we're, we because we're hacks, Jeremy. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck we're doing because we suck. Yeah, but anyway, check out his video. You said part two will be out next year, so get it in quick <laughs> before you miss it. Um, this one just says Anna likes gas too. I think she said she liked this. Yeah, but she just, she, she probably like drinks it or something. I was gonna say, I can't remember <laughs> if she said she liked the smell or she liked the... It wasn't taste, right? I'm, I'm, that wasn't... It could be. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Apparently the next Spider-Verse movie will have a five-month pregnant Spider-Woman fighting crime. Nice. Hot. Okay. Very empowering. <laughs> uh, also high rags. Hello. Uh, thoughts on Quantum sending death threats to Ackman Mum? 
Assuming yeah, I, I don't. Imagine. He's a crazy, weird guy that you should stay away from. I don't know. Yeah, I don't hope he doesn't try that shit with me, because our family's packing. I just, uh, I'll just go as far as saying, uh, not cool with death threats. EFAP is uh, anti that. We are anti death threats. We are pro death promises. Um. Hey all, and hi Ragoon. Hello. Have you seen the sci-fi channel show Killjoys? And if so, thoughts? The lead will play I've Red Sonya. I have not seen it. I know nothing about it. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. Out of loop on that one. Uh, you could play Dead Rising 1 and 2 on stream. Those are fun games you could knock out in a few streams. I was never that fond of Dead Rising 1. Um, I played it on Xbox and it was. I got annoyed uh, by the days limit and time limit and stuff. I was like, I want to mess Did you around. get annoyed by that? Yeah. You know that if you like let the timer expire, then you can just continue to play and then it'll be like in free mode. You just won't be doing the missions. As far as I'm aware, you run out of opportunities for a lot of the uh, elements of the game. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Um, I guess the thing is just that the time thing was like the big, unique mechanic of Dead Rising. I think that's what a lot of the people who like the series liked about that game. Oh yeah, I had uh, friends I feel that like... loved it. I just wasn't a fan. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I don't care for it. I just wanted to go around and do all the stuff and have fun with all the things that they put in the game. Uh, I guess it's a trade-off, right? Is that there's a level of intensity to uh, the experience with the time limit and the knowledge that, you know, you have to be methodical about the choices that you're making. And I guess it's a game that begs to be replayed. I also remember hating the save system, but I can't remember what it was. Bathroom. Right. You had to find bathrooms to save, and I know that that was... Right. Like, you had to find out where the bathrooms were and know to go to them, because if you died, then it was just... Uh. I didn't like that at all when I played as a kid. I wanted to like it. Then I was just like, I'll play Cod Zombies. Woo! And also, wait, well, yeah, Dead Space would have been around that. So that too. What are the zombie games were around then that were cool? Left for Dead. Oh, oh yes. And lots of time on Left for Dead. That. Uh, I remember Back for Blood? That was a thing. Oh shit, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Another game that's wow. been forgotten by everybody. <laughs> uh, I gave it a I gave it a damn fair chance, and I just couldn't. Yeah. I just can't. I just can't do it. I got I get screwed over enough times. I'm just done. Yeah. I wonder if they fixed that game by now. But I have I no know. idea. I went back after they supposedly fixed it, and I still felt like I kept getting screwed over. No. Yeah. was playing the critically acclaimed MMO Final Fantasy XIV when I encountered a player named Tonal Loke with his Chocobo Fred, no doubt named for the Cosmic Chicken of Elder. Really? Um, that's I very was. interesting. That's awesome. Hi, that is very interesting. An EFAP watcher is among us. <gasps> among us. Yeah. Among us. Among us. Among us. <laughs> what software would you recommend for a person looking to start a channel? Got a camera? Windows. Got a mic? How do you stop it from picking up background noise? You limit your background noise as much as possible when recording. Yeah, yeah you turn off your fans of, and you don't yeah. have stuff running in the background, for starters. I think uh, that's um, one of the things that you'll learn a bit more about as you, as you do, do it, more. is yeah. that you need to... A lot of it is about the environment that you're in and the way that it's recorded. Once that's done, it can be very difficult from that point on to like fix these things. So yeah, it is turn off your fan, turn off your... Um, I think Audacity, well, no, I know this because I've been recording with Audacity for years. You can get like a noise uh, filter, like a noise, I think it's noise reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, you just get a sample, like you like 10 okay. seconds of background noise. Um, you can take that sample and then the program will just identify that sound and then remove it for you. And that's a good way to reduce background noise, like the whatever's just gonna be in your environment anyway. But I mean, yeah, a lot of it is you just got to you got to make sure that you record it right the first time. Um, otherwise, it could be difficult to salvage in post. I'm not speaking from experience here, of course. I'm no. not speaking about anything that I've been working on lately specifically. No. Yeah, Sony Vegas is what I would recommend, but mainly because I'm just familiar with it at this point. 
That's what I um, use. I use Sony Vegas 19. I left and I was using 15 use, beforehand. Or I guess alternatively, if you used a lot of uh, Adobe programs, you can use Premiere. I use that for a little while. Um, but Vegas is something that you can get on uh, some Humble Bundles. So, yeah. Yeah, and if you... Once you get Vegas, you can upgrade to new versions for like half off. So, like, that's what I did. So I went, I, I jumped from 15 to 19, and it was oh, half the price. I think I'm way behind what version am I on? 14? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm on 15, so I need to upgrade. Uh, during No Way Home coverage, you guys said Harry, not Norman, is Gobby. Did we? Did we? Okay. So in Spider-Man 2, Harry is mad because Spider assassinated Norman. He knew Dad was Gobby. I'm very confused. I'm confused as well. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I can't give you a better answer because I'm not 100% sure of what, what's happening. Um, since you have no idea about the newer Pokemon, I'd like you to check out Yamask Pokedex entry in Pokemon Black. Is that easy to find? Do they just... I imagine if you just look it up, probably come up with a picture. Pokemon well, Black. I'm assuming they want us to see the entry, not the... Just the oh, picture. No. Uh... How does... How does that work? I assume it says it has a list of, like, all the Pokemon in it. And the Pokedex. Game data, Pokedex yeah. entries. What was it? Black? Black 2? Wait, there's a Black, 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 two? black, black. That, That's no, what it says. There are, there are multiple. There was a direct sequel to Pokemon Black and White. Yeah. Black so, and white the, the first one says, each of them carries a mask that used to be its face when it was human. Jesus. Sometimes they look at it and cry. Oh, oh my boy. god. <laughs> it used to be a Pokemon that used to be human? That's terrifying. Yeah, apparently. Why did yeah, they do this? Like, I, I don't know. The Black 2 one says these Pokemon arose from the spirits of people interred in graves. Each retains memories of its former life. That's even more, more <laughs> horrifying. God. Jesus Christ. Why? <laughs> it gets why worse and that? worse. But why? <laughs> don't bury it. Then fucking cremate. Or I don't know. Actually, is it... Tell me about this Pokemon. Is it like a cool one? Does it live its own life? What is... Like I don't know, maybe I maybe I would want to come back as a Pokemon, depending. I don't I don't know. What's the nature of this Pokemon and the world in I mean, which it I don't, exists? I don't. I mean, this this kind of I don't want to look like that. Oh, That's, I don't know about that. Kind of weak. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a little uh, bloopy. You scary. You don't even have elbows anymore. This is bullshit. Who needs elbows? I do. Maybe the whole thing is just bendy. Just bendy. Yeah. You just have these bendy appendages. Ben, jib, jib, jib. Ben, um, the other one they want to check is Phantump in Sun. Phantump? Yeah, in, in, the, in the Pokedex for Pokemon Sun, I guess. Yeah, with PH? Uh, yeah, yeah. Phantump. Let's see here. Uh, For Sun? Yes. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, what does the fuck I look like? That's weird. Let me, let me put a picture for y'all. So we got... This, this is Phantom... This is Stump Pokemon. What the fuck is going on Stump Pokemon? Stump Pokemon, Pokemon. okay. <laughs> How specific? Uh, let's see. These Pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who died oh, in the forest. No, why? They're crying so dying. like eerie screams. Oh no. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Pokemon, what are you doing? Jeez. Pokemon was fun. <laughs> well, I mean. Cubone. Yeah. Cubone is always. Well, even like. Ghastly, like it makes you wonder. Um, a lot of them make you wonder. Muck can't be a fun existence. But I suppose if he's. He's happy. I don't know. The third one, was, well, the last one was... Oh, hang on. I'm, I'm reading the one from oh. S.H.I.E.L.D. right now. With a voice like a human's child, it cries out to lure adults deep into the forest, getting them lost among the trees. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> Zack Snyder write a Pokédex? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. It does okay, we, we got a third one? Hit it. 
Uh, dr Drifloon in Sun. Drifloon? Okay. Drifloon? Uh... There it is. These are some weird looking Pokemans. Mm-hmm. Look at... I hope they're not as bad as Scanners. Look at... Look at this. That is weird. Why why does he have two long ball sacks? I don't know. <laughs> uh no right, which, which which entry we're we looking at? I didn't get that. Rifloon in Sun. In Sun again. Okay, here we go. Uh stories go that it grabs the hands of small child oh my god. <laughs> of small children and drags them away to the afterlife. It's just like The afterlife. Whoa, that's a place. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a yeah like canonically there's an afterlife in pokemon and pokemon will drag your children away from you <laughs> the second sentence it dislikes heavy children <laughs> it dislikes heavy children <laughs> so make sure your kid is fat so that pokemon don't drag it away to the afterlife you could avoid the afterlife you simply eat a lot of milk fat enough <laughs> Diets are discouraged in the Pokemon <laughs> universe. Wait, the other entries make it even worse. If for some reason its body bursts, its soul spills out with a screaming sound. Why? Why? And then its, its round body is stuffed with souls and expands each time it leads someone away. Jesus Christ. But it, and, and you look at it and you're like, oh, that's not like a scary looking Pokemon. That's just a fucking weird looking one. And they're like, no, actually, it's, a, it's just some horrific, terrible Soul creature that wants to drag creature. your children away to the <coughs> fucking afterlife. Apparently also loves damp, humid seasons. Oh, I, I don't it... care what it likes. <laughs> it can fuck off. Uh, Jesus. Check out Prophecy, the monster movie, for the first screen appearance of Man Bear Pig. Oh, and hi, Man Pooch. Type person, I guess. I am just a pooch, but hello, hello. Man Prophecy, the monster bear, movie. Right. Pig. What do y'all do after high school? I'm a senior. Well, university. What Last do you do college. after high school? Well, it depends on what you might want to do with your life. Maybe you go to college and get yourself a degree. Or maybe you... Get yourself involved in a trade and learn a skill mm. uh, or maybe you get addicted to drugs and live on the street become a crazy person mm. uh, and travel for the rest of your life mm. and uh lose your sense of uh personhood and thought uh who knows oh there's many kinds of exciting options yeah uh cavils had deleted all her vods and kept deleting them for three weeks after catboy ranch gate uh, she hadn't changed her mind on empty chair react slash J. Oh, well, I mean, like I said, I don't know anything about it, but if it's gone, it's gone. Like, the uh, almost said you referred to stealing videos as performance art, which, uh, yeah, that's not going to fly, but, um, opinion. like, she took it down, so, I don't know, let's give this all chill. Um, fuck, marry, kill, Maranthi, Mao Ying, Fei Enchantress. Google Warhammer for these? No. I'm alright. We'll just... I want to kill Enchantress, though. She's evil. Well, Fey Enchantress might be a different thing, but may as well be sure oh, about Faye it. Oh, Fey Enchantress? Like, because Fey is like a fairy. Well, spell F-A-Y instead of F-A-Y-E. F-E-Y? Oh, yeah, that one, too. I knew someone who went by F-A-Y-E. The online name. Um, you sound like people who want Dark Souls easy mode talking about Dead Rising. You can play most of the content without the time limit. Good way to level. It's not like I couldn't complete the game. I just didn't enjoy yeah, it's, that. I certainly could have gone back and finished. I just didn't like it. I didn't enjoy the game. Like, it wasn't about it being too difficult. Also, I don't... I, I mean, if people well, like not, it, it's fine. Yeah, they like, can have it. I'm actually fine with people not enjoying not, Dark Souls, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> so it's... Totally different thing. Not at all like people who say that Dark, Dark Souls should be easy. Because they know I didn't like it. Yeah, by the way, I never said that Dead Rising should be uh, without a time limit. That I don't like it. Because there's plenty of things I've played that have time limits in them. Um, Simpsons didn't run. Several levels have time limits. Unbelievable. Terrible game design. A kid, but uh, let us continue. 
Uh, you guys said Harry didn't know Norman was the goblin in Spider-Man 2, so by that, Harry must have thought Spider-Man assassinated Norman for no reason. Well, so he finds out at the end of Spider-Man 2, doesn't he? Remember he, he, throws, he, he throws the knife Spider and it smashes through the thing and then he, he's in there and he's like, oh my god. Or am I, am I misremembering? I think that's right. Yeah, then, I think so. Yeah, but, uh, because I think then at the beginning of Spider-Man 3, or at least the first section, uh, he we see him enter the chamber, right, and take the goblin gas. I don't think that's the end of Spider-Man 2. I think that's the beginning of Spider-Man 3, so... Um, yeah, I assume... Well, and I don't think that makes the film incongruent. If Spider-Man is holding the corpse of your father, you don't have to know why Spider-Man did that to be annoyed. Especially if Spider-Man doesn't provide you any kind of reasoning. Um, so, yeah, that, that's... Avenge me! No! Yeah, that's the scene. Yeah, because he finds out Peter is uh, is the Spider Spood, and so he no longer wants to kill Spoodman. Um, there's a theory that Pokédex entries are a mix of research and superstition, which is why trainers and profession professors keep filling and researching them. Well, sure, but somebody wrote the horrible things about children and spirits and stuff. <laughs> it got approved. And then, and then they put all the weird fucking rumors right next to the established facts, and so you don't know which is which. And I'm like, guys, this is not helpful. Uh, guys, Pokemon are sentient animals slash creatures. Of course, some of them are evil. <laughs> yeah, but some of them were humans before, and now they still... It doesn't make it better. It's still horrifying. And once you drag your children away to the afterlife, What's they're evil. <laughs> like, what do you think that we're chill with mosquitoes? Just because we're like, well, they're animals, you know? It's like, yeah, but they're still assholes. <laughs> Especially the ghost types. Look up Dusk Noir and Frostlass. Oh, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it. Smells on it. Uh, what was it? Dusk Noir? Yeah. That's one. And what's the other one? Uh, Frost. Uh, sorry. Where, where am I? A uh, Frost Lass. Frost Lass. Oh, these names, dude. I wrote that correctly, apparently. I'm surprised by that. Uh, let's see. Here's, here's a little, little picture for reference. That's Frost Lass. Uh, All right. I guess we're still looking at Sun, because apparently those are the most horrible ones. Oh, I have no idea. They didn't specify an entry. Uh, oh yeah, I just read it. That's definitely it. When it finds humans or Pokemon it likes, it freezes them and takes them to its chilly den, where they become decorations. Oh, oh my god, that's terrible. So is, are there entire, like, right, so do they, are you, are some of these Pokemon legal? <laughs> to own are there entire government organizations dedicated to wiping some of them out it gotta be keeping them in laboratories kidnapping children sending them to the afterlife it's like we need to wipe out this menace that's killing by the way that's called killing yeah it's, uh, these, these, these yeah. just they are specifically designed to murder children like that's the whole thing <laughs> so i feel like human governments would be like guys we gotta like some of these are great like like you know but some of these we we gotta, we gotta fucking kill. We gotta murderize some of these Pokemon. Hey, Pikachu's could cute and everything, but this one, no, oh, no. Could make We're some fine with the one that could summon <clears throat> thunderstorms, but the one that just goes around <laughs> killing children. I yeah. feel like we gotta draw a line somewhere. Those could be fucking SCPs. Entry, yeah. Uh, SCP entries. Yeah, really good. <laughs> the other one was uh. uh Dusk Noir. Dusk Noir. contained Pokemon. Noir. Yeah. <laughs> gotta contain them all. Uh, this one does not have a sun entry. Uh, let's see. Let me just see. Let me just find the most horrible one. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's said to take lost spirits into its pliant body and guide them home. Okay. Well, that's, that's a nice that's, one. That's, that's Why nice can't we one, have more yeah. of those? Uh, they're, they're at war with the ones who find lost children and drag mm -hmm. them to the afterlife. Uh, oh wait, uh, at the bidding of transmissions from the spirit world, it steals people and Pokemon away. No one knows whether it has a will of its own. Okay. What does it look like? Fucked up shit. The 
gripper Pokemon, apparently. The gripper? What? A Fuck gripper. that! A uh -oh. gripper Pokemon. There we go, that's, that's the one. Oh boy. What, 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 where does he take the children he abducts? <laughs> does he just kill them or does he like turn them into food uh, or stick them in a stew? It's said to take people to the spirit world. Does they come yeah. back? No specifications no. to whether or not they're willing or alive at the time. Is it a visit? Yeah. Like... No, just take them. Just you, oh, okay. you, you come with me. That could be okay, <laughs> I guess. <clears throat> never know. Never. We will never know. My favorite Pokédex entry is Gengar from Pokémon Sun. Ah, I saw that one. I already opened that one up, so I'm, I'm way ahead of you. Whoa. And now I scrolled past it. Damn it, where is it? <laughs> there we go. Uh, should you feel yourself attacked by a sudden chill, there's evidence of an approaching Gengar. There's no escaping it. Give up. <laughs> oh. Just says give up. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, there you go. Uh, Wow. You can still save survivors, kill psychos, etc. in Dead Rising 1 and 2 if you ignore the story, I guess. You'd probably like Dead Rising 3 better then. Oh, maybe. I have no idea. I'm very out of the yeah, loop on Dead Rising. Clue. 4 is the one everyone hates, right? That's the one everybody hates, yeah. Alright, guys. Favorite beers slash light alcoholic drink? Go! Also high ranks. Uh, hi, I like um, I like a lot of hard ciders, uh, that good apple stuff. I like Red's Apple Ale. Um, I enjoy uh, Land Shark Lager, from Blue Moon. Uh, you know, things of that nature. Nothing too heavy for me. I just really don't really don't care for the heavy dark stuff. My mm. favorite beer is Budweiser, not Budweiser. I have to clarify that because people get confused. Budweiser. That's not from the Americas. That's a very nice beer. Hmm. That is a, yeah, over here, that's just a light beer. Yeah. The board is from... Uh, let me check. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, I tend not to have any of the Bodva. beers or lagers, really. I go for just... Uh, if I wanted a light alcoholic drink, it would just be putting uh, lower amounts of a spirit into something to dilute it. Um, like Coke or Pepper C or Docker Pepper or or Lemonade. You never know. And then uh, I'm pretty chill with most spirits. I like them all. Oh, Budweiser's from the Czech Republic. Oh, my favorite. Gonna be Bailey's. That shit was designed to make you like <laughs> it, okay? Not my fault. <laughs> Bring you got any answers for that one? Uh, uh, I don't really like beer, so I guess cider counts as a light drink, then it'd probably yeah. be cider. Mm -hmm. But I prefer whiskey. Okay. The Rags, what you just mentioned would be a great Pokemon film or series, but Game Freak's never going to make it because they're not that creative. I mean, I, they're making the same game for 20 years. I was going to say, it seems to be working for them, though. Like, yeah. I don't know. Because if they came out with, like, we're going to do a story where the government start to hunt down all the most damaging and cruel Pokemon, <laughs> but it would be like, oh, wow, really? That sounds a bit... They'd probably be like, guys. no, it's wrong to do that. I think so, yeah. They, they'd probably be like, they Pokemon rights, even yeah, the ones that abduct Pokemon. fat children. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't like the fat children. Don't abduct fat There's children. There's got to be one that likes fat children, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, like, eats oh, them because they're fat and juicy. Because or they're fat, like that. <laughs> I want the chunky one. <laughs> this this Pokemon teams up well with the thin children stealer. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So between the two of them, they ate the town clean. Yeah. Like Jack Sprat <laughs> bullshit. Uh, hello, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and white chocolate. Thank you for the entertainment. Um, Wait, who's milk I think chocolate? milk chocolate. That's normal chocolate. No, who? Who? Yeah, because Wait, if they're saying they be dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and white chocolate, who's milk? Who's white? Well, it's going to be me or you. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> What's happening? Are we chocolate? <laughs> uh, <laughs> are we chocolate? 
<laughs> it, no, am I some creepy chocolate Pokemon who talks about movies? I mean, I just assume they would randomly <laughs> say hello to three chocolates. I thought this was like a fuck, Mary kill question. Well, there was no fuck, Mary kill, so why would you assume that? Is, God. No, you are chocolate in there either. It's <laughs> they're addressing chocolate and they're addressing us. There seems to be a connection. Yeah, fuck, Mary kill. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, why would you assume that before the fact that they are connecting us to chocolate? You because they, we are asked many strange fuck, Mary kill questions. Well, yeah, this but they usually have fuck, Mary kill on it, idiot. Yeah, they, well, yeah, where they often have a lot of qualifiers that this one just doesn't have. I see. Well, either way, hello. Um, <laughs> hello. Thank you for the entertainment. Also, thoughts on person from Buffy. I think she is overhated. Uh... I can agree with that. Yeah, sure. I don't, um, a lot of it's kind of similar syndrome sometimes to the um, Spider-Man stuff. Got to consider why she'd be making certain decisions, uh, considering the realities she is facing as well as her age. Um, without going into anything more depth than that. How about let's do this? Yes. Let's say from our favorite to least favorite, those three kinds of chocolate that was listed. Uh, milk white. I think that dark. would be easy. Yes, I I am gonna go milk dark than uh, than uh, white. Uh, I'd probably go white milk than dark. I like white chocolate. Yeah. Uh, right, Mel, sorry, someone, one. someone in chat just wrote why would metal say is from the land of chocolate, and I don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> the land of chocolate? Yes, Germany, the land of chocolate. Is uh, it? Ah, yes, of course. I just, I, well, I, I, just, I thought. Is that a like, reference Swiss? to Simpsons then? Swiss make chocolate, right? Yeah, I would. I would go with Swiss. Uh, I'd say I, uh, I, I. I like dark chocolate the most. Oh my god! Wait, do we just have every possible answer there, or at least we, we've, uh, we've, we've, nine, we, we've done all four of us a difference? Answers. Yeah, so we haven't done all yeah, of them, then, but we've done a few of them. Then milk and then white. You like dark chocolate the most? Damn. Yeah, I fucking love it. I was tempted to say dark chocolate first. I really like dark chocolate. I don't really. I Metal grew up it, but... surrounded by chocolate. <laughs> I grew up surrounded by chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that will go down as one of the stupidest fucking that... lines in anything ever. I grew up I surrounded like, by water. It's like, thanks, Grandpa. Now go back to your castle <laughs> now. Thanks, dude. That was really helpful. <laughs> he just put a little hat on, uh, the little tism hat on. He's like, oh, surrounded by water. It's like, yeah, yeah, but that's fine. Just go back to you. Go back and play with your rancor. Um, so Spider-Man stripped Norman of his suit before delivery. That's what they show us, yeah. When he drops in Norman, he's not got his suit on. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. End of Spider-Man one. He puts him on the on the couch, and he's not got. He's like wrapped in a towel or something. He's not got his suit on. And I think that's because Norman says, "Don't tell Harry," right? Think so? Genuinely, unless my brain is playing tricks on me, that's how I remember all of that going. Animal of the day, the Gooty Sapphire Ornamental. Is this real? Gooty Sapphire Ornamental. Ooh, is a uh, Spooda. Oh, I've a, seen that one before. That's a pretty Spooda. That's a, it's the, the blue Spooda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at That's that boy. That's cool. I like it. I hope it doesn't kill the me. Blue, blue <laughs> spider with some white and, white and yellow highlights. Very nice. Very interesting. Um, yeah, and that catches up with, uh, with, with, uh, with, 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 catches us up with today's. We did it. Well, wow. Yay. Oh, my God. I, I, what? You okay? <laughs> what do we, what do, what, <laughs> what do, we do Breathe. now? Well, Breathe. I, uh, if we end a, a little earlier than usual, that means we can probably do Moon Knight if you guys want. I know. That. Yeah, that's right. We can catch up on that and see what all of the rave is about. And moon some nights. Is that a sigh, Fring? I thought you loved this show. <laughs> uh, what gave you that impression? All of the the enthusiasm, all the sighing, uh, uh, like a really enthusiastic uh, sigh, like a ah, yeah. Yeah, Moon Knight. Here we go. Woohoo! So, um, yeah. Thank you all so much. We will see you on Saturday, and I don't think I'm actually... Oh, wait. Ugh. Oh, I'm sorry about this, but I'm appearing on some other stream on Friday. Some guy. Well, 
talk to me about a movie or whatever. Uh, oh, oh, what a l loser. Yeah, I've yeah. told him it's kind of getting kind of weird and gross, but he just keeps on doing it, you know? Do you come from a land of chocolate? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, anything you guys want to want to say and, and sloom to anybody before we, we go off lines? Um, gosh, is anything on my mind? I don't think so. Um, I suppose I'll just, um, yeah, I'll probably watch this show with you guys and we'll get back to you on Saturday, maybe, about how it, uh, how it was amazing. How it was. Mm -hmm. How, yeah, how it really was the best thing Marvel has put out since that fateful day. Um, fair enough. And, oh yeah, of course, just keep an eye out because that, that fringy video is coming. Yeah. It'll be beautiful. Uh, Hopefully. And yeah, uh, we are, with a new system in place, gradually getting to the point where I will be able to announce, possibly within the month, not this month, a month, um, like 30 days, uh, that we will have caught up fully with Super Chats. Oh boy. Which will be the that. beginning of cycling back up the EFAP movies industry, okay? As well as other potential things. Who knows? But this Saturday, we do indeed already have a video ready to be to be checked out. So join us for what will be a fun romp through the ideas that some people have on the internet. Um, mm. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Last one says, Fuck, Mary kill, Batwoman, Ruby Rose, Holdo, Female Doctor. Oh. That's four. Mm. Oh, Bat no, Ruby Rose is Batwoman? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're killing Holdo. I think. So it's Ruby Rose, Batwoman, Holdo, and... I think of the utility of marrying any of them. I guess with the Doctor, you get to go on crazy adventures. Yeah. And she will regenerate. <laughs> so, you know. That's true. You can't just... Oh, maybe that's just your reroll for the Doctor. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not going to be so bad for Ooh. so long. She'll regenerate. She'll get someone new. So then it's down to... Mm. I guess... Kill Holdo and fuck Batwoman. Fine, there you go. Done, done, done. Yeah, I'd kill Holdo, fuck Batwoman, and marry the uh, Doctor. Excellente. All right. Good night and goodbye, everybody. Bye, bye. 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 See y'all later. <laughs>